Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio. This is one of your hosts, Tyson Roush, and we are a couple weeks away from the draft, which is going full speed ahead, which will be very interesting. So we got a lot to talk about. We got trading up, trading down. We got rumors. We got speculation. We got war rooms in Joe Douglas's house. We all got all kinds of stuff. So let me introduce the man of the people, Long Beach Joe. What's up, man? What's going on, Ty? Yeah, man. A lot of stuff to go over. Man, draft's coming up. This is going to be huge for us. It's going to be huge for the franchise, man. Uh, there's some holes to fill. Things we got to get going, you know, and, and Joe Douglas has got a lot of decisions he's got to make. So, listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me share with you from our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page, our content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. We love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. So, without further ado, Ty, let's go ahead and get into the show, man. I'm fired up. Yeah, I'm pretty fired up, too. As always, we're on Instagram and Twitter, at Talk Jets Radio. We're on YouTube, Let's Talk Jets Radio. If you want to uh, check us out, you can, we're on iTunes, Spreaker.com. We're pretty much all over Podbean and Google Play, Apple Play, and all those other things. So definitely subscribe. Like Joe said, leave us feedback. Interact with us. As you see on YouTube, we all respond. We all respond pretty much on every platform. So uh, we're having a lot of fun with that. I um, want to thank everybody. Last week, we, I did an impromptu raffle. Um giving away a, a mini helmet signed by Jamal Adams and Marcus May. We raised 1000 bucks in two days. So that money went to the food bank of the community food bank of New Jersey and fulfillnewjersey.org. So I want to thank everybody that was on all our social media helping out, promoting it, and donating. Completely appreciate it. It was crazy it went that fast. So uh, we're doing another one probably two weeks for first responders. So stay tuned for that. And, you know, obviously we hope everybody's staying, you know, staying safe, staying healthy, social distancing. Um, Joe, I, I was meaning to ask you this last week. How is it for you as a first responder dealing with all this, you know, with, as being a fireman, a first responder, how has this been, yeah. been an impact on you? Uh, yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about this, I think, but um, uh, just the way that we respond to calls definitely has changed a little bit uh, because, again, with, you know, the, the, the virus and the transmission, how, you know, it, easy it is to transmit, Um it's just about us being safe, uh, making sure we have our PPE, um, and just, you know, asking all the right questions. Can't go into, you know, too, too much <laughs> because of HIPAA law, so I'm not going to talk about, you know, actual patient contacts or anything that I've made. But, uh, you know, we're very aware, and we're definitely uh, taking the necessary precautions. Now, what is California like? Because right now in New York and New Jersey, where it's, it's not very good. We, we have a – it's just we're, we're mm-hmm. almost at our peak this week coming up. And it's, we're in lockdown, mm-hmm. like they closed the parks, they closed the boardwalks. I mean, we're pretty much mm-hmm. just down to essential people. What's it like in California? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Um, we're, you know, it's every, everybody that's essential is uh, moving around. Um, it's still, you know, a stay-at-home order. I don't know. I believe it's maybe extended soon. I know, uh, you know, that's going to be talked about coming up in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, you know, everyone's just trying to stay home and, you know, just kind of stay out of the way at this point, but it's it's pretty much the same. You know, we shut down a lot of stuff, uh, grocery stores, uh, you know, all the essential businesses are pretty much open. Everything else is closed. Yeah, it's it's wild times. Like we're we're here in New Jersey. It's like till April 29th. I think the Governor Murphy said today it's probably going to go into May. So it's it's pretty yeah, wild, man. Yeah, so everybody every, think it's it's yeah, it's wild, man. Mm-hmm. So so. Yeah, um, everybody's just, looking to um, see what happens. Yeah, it's, that's what he said. Everybody wants, like, a timeline. Like, you know, you know Donald Trump's like, oh, you know, the president's like, oh, we're going to be playing football, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that. And it's like, there's a pretty good chance there'll be no OTAs because everything's getting pushed back because they've got to be safe yeah. on so many different lines and, and there's so many precautions yeah. they've got to take and everything else. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, like I said, even, you know, the way that we're handling things has changed as well. This is an extremely contagious uh, virus. And until they get, you know, more of a handle, handle on it, try to figure out, you know, whether it be vaccines or whatever it is, you know, and, and trying to really figure out the virus itself, everybody, again, just stay home, you know, <laughs> chill out, understand, you know, it's a little tough, people want to go outside, but 
you know, all these parties. I've seen parties online as well. People are trying to have, and you know, they're they're kind of getting away from social distancing and getting together. And, you know, just stay home, sit it out, and just wait a little bit. You will be back to normal, you know, in no time, hopefully. Yeah, and that was the thing that happened here. It was like, you know, it was, was kind of like cold and damp for a few days. We had one nice day where it was like 65 degrees and sunny, and then today they had to close all the parks. They had to close everything. Like, you know what? You obviously can't handle the responsibility of enjoying nice weather responsibly, so now we've got to close everything. It's just like, listen, just stay home. Like, yeah. the proof is in the pudding. Like, you, you can see the results when everybody's social distancing. The numbers are, are you know, their, the curve is flattening. There's, there's you know, progress, so. Um, they, it's, yeah. it's wild, man. I've never, I've never seen nothing like this before. Now it's, you know, as we go, we look at the draft. And the one interesting thing about this draft, Joe, and we're going to talk about a bunch of different scenarios, but the one thing I, I was thinking about was, you know, right now they're saying in order to be fair, all the teams have to operate the same. So they're obviously not going to be in a team mm-hmm. facility. They all have to be home. And they don't want teams to congregate in somebody's house. So they don't want, like, Joe Douglas, Adam Gase, and Chris Johnson all in one room. They want everybody separated. They want to be fair across the board. Mm-hmm. So if it's going to be like that, traditionally a war room is all your scouts, your guys, your, like all you guys are trying to like you know argue about players and make your case and work the phones. Based on this setup, yeah. Joe, just overall in general, could you actually see less trades happen just due to the the logistics and the communication challenges that all these teams are going to face? Uh, well, uh, yes and no. Uh, Yes, if you have a lot of connections, because a lot of teams are, are calling each other constantly anyway. You know, rather, I mean, I know, you know, some people know, but there's a lot of people, a lot of teams that, regardless whether it be, you know, just on all kinds of things, you know, we've even, ta- we've even heard about people, the rules committee, where certain people will get together and then, yeah, they talk about the rules here and there, but then they start talking about players and other teams. There's stories about deals being struck there, you know, so... If you have the right connections, and Joe Douglas has a lot of connections around the NFL, if you got that phone, you can still make some calls and do some things. You know what I'm saying? you got to adapt to the situation because, again, I understand, you know, this, this virus is, you know, doing its thing, and we're trying to figure that out on that side. But, you know, here on this side, if we're still going to be doing this draft and playing football, you just got to kind of adapt to the situation and go after what, what's there. So he can still make some calls. There could still be some movement made, whether it be up or down, you know, whatever he chooses. There could still be some deals struck. So I could, I could still see movements, you know, happening across the board. Yeah, I see. I think, like, in, say, for, like, the first round, I think a lot of these things are already kind of prearranged. With it. Like, you know, where a team will say, listen, we want player X. If he's not here... We want to trade back. We'll do this deal. So I think the first round, maybe even the second round, there'll be a lot of, like, kind of, like, you know, we're, we're going to have this in place in case something doesn't work out. But I think, like, you know, when you go, like, deep into day two, day three, when, the, when the, your time is quicker and you got a lot of just movement, you got people coming, going, this, that, and usually you have, like, three or four phones in the same room where you can all make phone calls mm-hmm. next to each other and say, hey, man, what do you say? Okay, what do you say? Like, I just think there, there's going to be so much, there's, there's like, to me, it seems like to be a lot of challenges to get it done. Where I think it could be less, or there could be mistakes well, made. I think you got to really have your stuff together here because you could make you could make some serious mistakes. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying is that the adaptation part. Maybe the way that you know normal things would be ran, maybe it's not ran through one or two guys. Where maybe that call, all these calls will come into two guys instead of four, or one guy instead mm-hmm. of you know instead of instead of two, something like that. You know what I'm saying? So the way that you operate may change because it's like, hey, we need this one guy. It, all the calls may come to Joe Douglas at one point where it's like, hey, he needs to make you know, the decision whether to move up, move down. Hey, I want to take this guy. Let's do that. So that may be what, what's going to happen here. We may just change the way that we operate because of these circumstances. Yeah, no doubt at all. And then the other question I have for you is, I've just been thinking about this all day today, was you, know, you look at, yeah. you, know, you're in the, you have a lot of uncertainty about how the drafts can be run, stuff like that. Another big part, and which is which is crucial for a lot of the, the later rounds, is the interviews and the physicals. Yeah. And not being able to yeah. get some of these guys that have a physical. I mean, if you're the Jets, do you? I mean, we obviously talked about we have a lot of need. We can't we can't miss. Like we need guys that can contribute this year. You know, guys whether it's special teams, whatever it is, we can't have a bust. If a guy has a questionable medical and we can't give him a physical, do you think Joe Douglas shies away from those kind of players? That yes, I know, maybe, possibly. 
Can I hear you? Yeah, it, it, can, you, can you hear me? It's damn blog talk. I'm just now, talking. Yeah, now I can't. Now, <laughs> now I can't. Now I can't. Now I can't. <laughs> okay, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, come on, blog talk. Come on now. Listen. Uh, yeah, you know, the way that uh, he handles some players at this point, it's like, look, these guys didn't just start scouting them. He should already kind of know and get a gist of what these guys are about, especially watching their tape and all these things. So if a guy comes in and you know kind of in the past he's had a little bit of an injury history with certain things or he can't pass a medical, and like you said, you know, we need the closest to a sure bet as we can get because we need these guys to hit. I don't think a lot of, you know, other fans of this team know, look, this draft is pivotal for us. It's huge. It is paramount that we get good players. Uh, you know, I know we're, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but let me tell you something. If we have a first-round pick in this draft, particularly if it's an offensive lineman, we take a left tackle and he busts out in this draft, that could set us back for years. Let me tell you, this is, this is big. I know a lot of people are not thinking that that's big. It's really that big. We need impact players now, okay? I mean, look at the, look at the past. Look at how horribly we've drafted just these past five years and how it's killed us. Look at, look at the point we're at right now. So if Joe Douglas is looking at a guy, he's got a questionable medical or a questionable background, uh, you know, he has issues with attitude issues or anything like that, that might be a guy that you want to pass on, you know, and you want to take another guy at, the, at a different position or a same position that's going to be able to come in with less question marks and give you production because of the situation we're in, again, dealing with the virus. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. Like, I, I'm thinking, like, we're not in a position to be – bold and fancy and take, you know, shots in the dark and stuff like that. We can't have mm-hmm. a Shakai Polite this year. <laughs> you know, we, that kind of yeah. player should not be on our draft board this year. We can't, that player, yeah. like, if you have an injury concern or attitude concern or work ethic concern, you can't be on the draft board. Like, that's just got to be a guy we got to rule out. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Because, again, <laughs> because of how we're dealing with stuff, if you can't bring a guy in to kind of talk to him, get a better feel of him, uh, and like I said, the questionable medical stuff on the background, nope, it, it's time to move on and you get the right guy, you know, in that has less question marks because we've got to hit, especially in these times, man, the way that the draft is just set up this year. No, I, I completely agree. So then, you know, you look at all that, you say, okay, there are some challenges, and now you look at the 11th pick and the, the ongoing debate when you're on any of our social media platforms is the same thing, and it's, offensive lineman or wide receiver. And that's what everybody's talking yeah. about, up, down, and backwards. And it's just kind of a matter of who do you think goes where and who's going to be there at 11. The rumor, you know, this week was where the Atlanta Falcons may want to trade up to our spots so we could trade back. Um, I understand the whole notion of trading back. But, Joe, for me personally, my stance on this draft is if your guy is there at 11 that you think is a guy that can help us, whether it's the offensive line or wide receiver, I, I don't want to trade back. Like, I, I want guys that are going to contribute because both those positions are so damn important. And if it's one of you, see, from what I've read on this draft, and I'm not an expert by no means, but you have your top four guys that everybody believes in with the offensive linemen, Thomas, Beckton, Werbs, and Willis, or Wills. So you have those guys. After that, there's a little bit drop, there's a little drop off to Josh Jones. If you can get one of those four guys, I'm taking one of those four guys. But that's why I'm not, I'm not playing, I'm not getting fancy, I'm not, you know, I just don't want to do that. Um, or if you say, listen, those four guys are gone, you can get the best receiver in the draft that you think is the best receiver, and you could take him, yeah. I'm taking him. Like, I, I'm not yeah. – I know everybody says we got to get draft picks, but we need value. We need very good players. I mean, what is your take on trading back? I'm not necessarily against it, but it just depends on how far we're trading back. Um, if you're talking about moving back to Atlanta, they better be giving us something serious because if you move down to 16, none of those tackles are going to be there, and I honestly don't believe any of those wide receivers are going to be there either. Nope. Uh, because if Atlanta's moving up, they're probably going to take a wide receiver. Then you got the uh, the new <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> they're more than likely going to take a wide receiver. San Francisco could yeah. definitely uh, use a wide receiver. Denver's there as well. Um, they could take a wide receiver as well, or take a, take a you know offensive line help. So you're sitting at 16, and all of the you know two of the greatest needs that we have, uh, you just let slide by you. By the time you get down to 16, what are you going to take? Another defensive tackle? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not funny, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, kids. I'm, you know, I was just trying to joke, make light of stuff. I was trying to have some fun. All right, look, I'm not trying to bust, bust anyone's bubble. It's just a joke, kids. All right. We, uh, hopefully, we're not going to take, uh, you know, a defensive tackle. Everyone settle down. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, what, what I am trying to say is that, uh, you know, you don't want to move down, um, 
and, and miss your guy. You don't want to move too far down and let things slide out of your hands. So if, you know, like I said, there, there's a chance that none of the tackles could be there at all by the time 11 comes. So if we're sitting at 11 and all those tackles are gone, but you got guys like Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb, Henry Rugg still on that board, I still wouldn't trade now because we still need you know wide receiver help. We need to get a number one and number two. Uh, so I, I wouldn't move down if, if that's the scenario, and I also wouldn't move down too far if some of those guys are still on the board. Honestly, I wouldn't move down past maybe 13. I wouldn't move down past yeah. that, to be absolutely honest with you. I wouldn't. Uh, because they, those guys would be gone, and then we'd be stuck, and we'd be in a world of hurt. Yeah, and that's the one thing that, you know, it's like there's like a fine line with trading back, and you nailed it perfectly. It's like you trade back because you want to get more picks, but you also got to get the value that yeah. you want. You don't want to go from a top-level yep. player to like a – like a, you don't want to go from like an A-plus to like a B, B-plus. Like I want the A mm-hmm. player. Like that's kind of the goal, and, and we need them. That's the most important thing. We need that player. So – but yeah. the question I have for you is, and the one thing, it's weird because most of our conversations are about offensive line and wide receiver. Everybody wants them, and I completely agree. Either, if you go either yeah. way, I'll be happy with it. But is it safe to rule out every other position in the first round? Like, can we say, listen, offensive line or wide receiver makes a lot of sense. If we go, if we go defensive line, you might as well just, just cancel this show because I'm just going to go I'll off the it. deep end. I will. I'll, I'll do that again. We'll go. We will go R-rated show for about three weeks. I'm just cursed every day. I hate <laughs> to say, like we're not gonna go, we're not gonna go linebacker. We're not gonna go defensive end. I, I get kind of nervous about corner if some if somebody drops or if Joe Douglas um, maybe corner maybe. But Joe, is it safe to say that's really what we're at? It's like offensive line and wide receiver. No other position will probably be considered here. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, to be absolutely honest with you, that's. To me, in my mind, offensive playmaker, off- wide receiver, um, offensive line is our greatest need because offensively we are horrific. We had the 32nd ranked offense in the league. That's not me making that up. That's not me, you know, just pulling something out of thin air. That is the facts. Go look at the stats. Um, look at Le'Veon Bell's average per carry. Like, look at look. Just watch the tape. Watch the struggles of the first seven weeks. Watch, you know, us be against a third string slash practice squad Bills defense where they had wide receivers out there playing corner and we still couldn't move the ball offensively. Go back and watch us lose to the Dolphins and get beat by a three man front. Guys that I don't I don't think you even know who they are either. I damn sure don't remember who any of those guys were. Go watch us get beat by the Bengals. We got beat by two zero and seven teams in the same year. We're the first team in NFL history to ever have that happen to us. Our offense was horrific no. this year, and we and we can't we can't allow that to continue. So I don't think there's a greater need, uh, you know, on this team than to invest in Sam Darnold and 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 help him and groom him and help mature him. Because if we don't start investing there, dude, we're gonna kill that kid. We're absolutely gonna destroy him. No, I completely agree with you. I mean, this is something that we've talked about, and now it's like, you know, all the you know mm-hmm. Joe Douglas did his interview, and he kind of said, "Listen, I promised Sam Darnold's parents." I'm going to build around him. And I kind of made all kinds of jokes because I'm like, if that's what you, if that's what you promise, is it a five-year plan? He didn't do it this year, but I'm not going to be negative because that's when I, I, I pay people up. Uh, <laughs> that's what he promised them, you know what I'm saying? First thing you need to do, fam, is get Adam Gaze out of here. <laughs> that's the first thing you need to do. But, you know, we'll see what happens. So that's what, you know, Joe Douglas said all the right things where he wants to build, you know, build the offensive line and, you know, they said a lot of positive things about Perryman and, you know, what yeah. everybody wants to hear. But the fact of the matter is there's still a lot of questions, and not having, potentially not having mini camps and OTAs will be an enormous challenge for the offensive line. So now it's like you, you know, having a lot of veteran, veteran guys would be nice mentors for your rookie linemen, which is good. But then you look at it, Joe. So now look at these draft picks. You know, everybody has the same four names up there, and there's questions of who's going to be available at 11. So in your opinion, based on what you've seen, who do you think will actually be there at 11? Man, um, from what I've seen, um, just some you know, various mock drafts or what I think, I think there's a chance that Jerry Judy could still be there. Um, maybe CD's there. Um, I think that Henry Ruggs will still be there as well. Uh, as far as tackles, it's weird because it kind of jumps. I know some people said that Andrew Thomas – uh, may still be there. I've heard some people say that. I know Mackay Beckton 
people are saying that he still might be there as well. Um, so, listen, let me tell you something. If, if Thomas is there, I'm taking him. I'm taking him. Said and done. <laughs> not, not an issue here. But if none of those tackles are there, I'm going to keep saying this. I, I think you, you take Jerry Judy. I mean, the guy's tape, he just jumps off. His route running is amazing. Um, you give you give Sam a target, and then you try to, you know, find some way to sure up that right tackle spot. Because again, I don't anyone that we have on this roster necessarily is going to be a good option there. So either you try to make a trade and get Trent, and then put Fant over at that right tackle spot, or you do something. Because again, there's there's quite a drop off from the, the you know these top tackles in the first round and the guys in the second and third. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. And that's the one thing. It's like you listen to Joe Douglas talk, and he talked about the versatility alignment, the athleticism, mm-hmm. their flexibility, all this stuff. I'm like, that's great, man. They can all be versatile. That's wonderful. But, but at some point, you need, like, anchors and stability and, like, just, like, yeah. a, a, a block in front of Sam. So it's like, all right, which one of these guys can do it? And I, you keep seeing the same two names, or I see the same two names for the Jets. It's either Beckton or Thomas, which is, hey, listen, yeah. they're there. You know, Beckton is just a freak, man. His size and athleticism is just ridiculous. But it's like, mm-hmm. all right, if they're not there, you know, then do you go receiver, or did, or then do you consider trading back there? Is that is that the point where it's like, listen, the four linemen are gone. We can either get like mm-hmm. a Judy or a Lamb, or do you say, you know what, we can get these receivers because the receiver class is so deep. Is there a big mm-hmm. drop off from the top receivers to the second tier receivers? Um, I mean, in my in my opinion, look, I, I love Mike Pittman, but he's not Jerry Judy. I mean, he's not. And I'm not saying it's a gi- like a, just a gigantic drop-off, but, dude, you look at these guys, Jerry Judy, C.D. Lamb, Henry, these guys are day one starters. These are guys that you bring in, and they can be your number ones or your number twos. They instantly give your offense explosion like there's there's no issue. So, again, if because we are so in need of offensive weapons, we are we are just absolutely void of talent there. You've got to make sure you get the guy. So to me, if those guys are off the board, if there's no tackles there, no, I don't trade down. I'm especially not trading down at least three spots down because I know that these teams, again, the Raiders, um, you know, and, and a couple other teams, Denver, you know, th- these teams are wide receiver hungry. These 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 guys know that we pretty much know that these guys are going to go after wide receivers. San Francisco's in that mix as well. So I'm going to make the play and get one of those guys. Because I need to give my quarterback somebody to throw to. Because if you don't, you're you're going into this season with like Crowder, Dobson, and Perryman, and whoever you would get in day two or day three. I, I, I think again because we let Robbie go, you know, which is, to each his own. You know, it, again, we, he moved on, and and you know he's with the Panthers, and I wish him nothing but the best of luck. But you're asking a day two or three guy to come in and give you production as a number one wide receiver. I get that the class is deep, but still, he's a day or two or three guy. You're asking him to come in and be that that weapon that you need. Can you really ask that of a young kid? Can you really ask that of a guy day two or day three? I don't know. I don't know. But I do I do truly believe that if you get a Jerry Judy or a C.D. Lamb or a Rugg, you can ask that of those guys, and they'll be able to come in and provide. No, dude, listen, and that's, that's kind of what we were talking about before. It's like, listen, like, it's, like, you understand the desire to try to trade back, and I, I get it. Like, I, I completely understand. The, but, like, the one thing about McHagan mm-hmm. sometimes, especially in the later rounds, is he got way too cute with it. Where he's like, he was trading back, and it was like, dude, you're, you're yeah. passing up on players now. And, like, we're currently in a position, especially with the way we handle free agency, especially the way he handled it, where it's like, listen, we need playmakers. And you're almost in a position where, like, you know, if you get that elite guy, which, you know, that those top three guys are elite, then take them. Like, just yeah. take them and say, listen, here you go, Sam. Here's your guy. And we're going to build, like, that's because we don't have the wiggle room. Like, you talked about, like, you, have, you have Crowder. You have Crowder. Quincy, according to everything I read, Quincy is still a complete unknown. I, to be honest, I don't think you could expect much from him. So you have, you, have, you have Crowder, you have Perryman, and you have Manny Moe and Jack. You have Berrios and Vincent Smith and everybody, everybody else that everybody's trying to sell me, which I'm not going to buy. So yeah. it's like, all right, get that. <laughs> Get that other guy because the other the other problem we're going to have, Joe, is that rookie wide receiver is also not going to have OTAs. Most likely, not going to have a mini camp. Nope. The learning curve for them is going to be so much harder this year as opposed to any yep. other year. And it's hard to begin with, but now it's like you're missing all this, and basically there's a good chance you're going right to training camp. So you got to learn yeah. the offense, yeah. learn the speed of the game, learn your quarterback, learn your coach, learn all these things, 
learn the NFL, learn the defenses. These rookie wide receivers, you know, man, they're going to have some challenges. Yeah, you know what's crazy, and I know we're going to talk about this, but I just want to put this out there. You just talked about that, the fact that some of these things may not, you know, be there. We're, the, the OTAs, all this stuff, you might just run training camp, training camp. You know what all that is going to highlight? Coaching. Coaching. How good or bad your coaching is. That's what all Bingo. of this is going to highlight. How good or bad your coaching is. How well do you prepare players? How well, how good are you are getting the most out of players? Are, are, you, are you good at figuring out this guy's ceiling and pushing him to the limit or finding out what he does the best in an offense so that he can become a playmaker? You know, what do you do? Are you a guy that, that raises this guy's talent? Or are you a guy that just kind of plays to whatever little talent they have just now and then that's it? That's the most you can get out of them. So it, that, I'm telling you, this, this is going to highlight. I'm not, you know, I know people will try to say I'm a gay sure. basher. I'm not, I'm not basher. I'm just saying, I'm just stating the point right now. <laughs> that with these things being gone, we're about to figure out who we have as an offensive coordinator and head coach here. We're about to figure it out for sure. It's going to be put on blast, And baby. offensive line coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no way of getting around this one, okay? We're about to see what you got. Can you turn these guys into players? Can, can you do that? Because, again, all these guys we're talking about, we're excited about. C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, we know these guys. These guys have talent. Okay, let's see what you can do with them when they get to this level. How do you help them ascend? And if you can't do that as a head coach or an offensive coordinator or, like you said, offensive line coach as well, you know what I'm saying, we we looking at you. So, But, yeah, man, it's just there's so much going on and there's so much to be had in this first. I'm just, I'm, the thing I'm scared about is is that, if we do move down, which I hope we don't do, but if we do move down, like you said, we move down further and miss out on a guy. But to me, I think the, the big point of you know, possibly trading down in this draft would be in those mid-rounds. I could see us making moves there and being able to gain capital and collect stuff and get other players in those mid-rounds. But that first round, I just I don't know. I don't think that you move down. Unless you get some like significant package that helps address one of your needs, you know, which I, I, you know, I've heard people throw around all kinds of crazy stuff that I, I don't think is realistic. I respect everyone's takes, you know, and I hear you, I, you know, and I go back and forth with everyone, but there are some takes that I've seen that I don't believe are realistic at all. Uh, but if you can get something solid and then it moves you down and still puts you in a position to continue and address needs on the football team, that might be a move that we could look at. Yeah, I, I just had this feeling where you look at the way that, you know, the free agency played out where there was a run offensive lineman and the receiver market didn't go like we, where we thought it was going to go, which means teams mm-hmm. all know the re- wide receiver class is good and they're going to take the wide receiver. So, like, you see in the draft where there's a run on a player or a run on a position where it's like, all right, you see it. It's like, you know, whatever it was. Sometimes it's quarterback, sometimes it's whatever. This year I have a funny thing. It's going to be wide receivers after the quarterback teams mm-hmm. that are, you know, like after Tua and Burrow and those other guys. But it, it's interesting, yeah. man. Like, it's just... I just, you know, you, you want that elite playmaker. We, we need it at the free agency. Like, yeah, at the free agency, like, you kind of walk away. We're like, don't sell me on fans. I'm not going to buy it. Like, don't sell me on the could-haves and should-haves and maybes. Like, we need, like, yeah. pieces for the future. Like, this is our, these are our building block guys. Like, your first-round pick is your yeah. building block guy. Like, three years from now, that's the guy you want to be in the Pro Bowl. Like, that's, we can't, we can't yeah. have no more Leonard Williams and Darren Lees and Calvin Pryors. Like, those days have to be gone Ooh. now. Oh, Lord, <laughs> those names, I want to throw up. <laughs> oh, God. I said, said Darryl, Lee, I, oh, oh, man, man, I, you know, man, that's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> but, uh, but moving on from that, you're, you're completely correct, though. Um, you know, we, we have to have a guy that's going to come in and be able to produce. You know, like you said, in a couple of years, they should be pro bowlers. They should be guys that – you know, I've helped raise the talent on this football team. And, you know, it's crazy that we're talking about, you know, this thing, the wide receiver class having so much talent here, and even, you know, the, the tackle position, there being four there and us, you know, being in a position to possibly get one of them, those are our needs. So a lot, of, a lot of what we need is sitting in this draft, and we have to just go up there and grab it, man. We have to take the right player in this draft. So like I said, it's going to set us back for quite a while, quite a while. I'm, I'm really fascinated to see – how Douglas, you know, handles this situation, how he handles the board. You know, if he moves up, if he moves down, particularly, again, like I said, in those mid-rounds where, you know, we have some capital. So, you know, he's got some picks. He's got to make do with what he's got. 
All right, we will go to the calls, 929-477-2651. We're going to go to our good friend Shaq. Shaq, what's up, man? What's good, man? What's good, fellas? Uh, no. I was telling prime time. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, tell, no, go ahead. We're good. I was I was telling prime time, man. We don't, we, I don't want to do it, but we're going to have to trade back. Got to do it. Okay. How far? I don't want to do it, but we got to. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, whatever whatever offer comes, man, it depends on what we're getting, man. Probably, well, I want to say probably to around maybe 18, 19, maybe 20. The 25 and back, no. 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 You, you don't want to say back? Wait, wait. We can feel it? Whoa. You're going back to 18? Yes. Come on, man. What are we going to we, we, yes. we Hold on. We did free agency bargain basement shopping. Now we're going to bargain basement shop the draft, too? Come on, man. We did playmakers. Yeah, man. Look, I feel like if Lamb, I'm not a uh, the Judy part of I, whatever, but if, if Lamb or Judy is not there, I feel like we should trade back. I just feel like, it, I, it, hey, look, Tyson, it's better than trading DeMar Adams, all right? Uh, yeah, 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 man. That's a way of getting top. That's all Joe. Hey, listen, this is that's, all Joe. Now. I'm gonna sit back and eat my popcorn. Yeah, this, this was is all Joe now. Pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I, I want to thank you for calling in, Shaq. But what I don't understand with this that this whole take, you know, I, I respectfully, uh, what I don't understand is if you're trading. Hey, Joe, hold on a second, like, man. Hold on, Joe, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> I, what I don't what I don't understand is that with this take is you, you're saying we have to trade back to 18, but you're passing. You potentially are going to pass up guys that can immediately come in and be, you know, franchise changers for you. If one of the tackles are there at 11, you're saying, hey, I still want to move back to 18. If one of those wide receivers are there, I mean, you scoffed at Jerry Judy like, <laughs> like he was just kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, whatever. No, dude, like he's out of days on you do that. Okay. Well, you could say that for any offensive player in this draft, then. And we should just close up shop and not draft. I mean, CD Lamb is uh, any system he type player. Yeah, uh, and and there's some guys. Henry Ruggs is extremely explosive. Some people, Henry. you know, compare him to some some of the most explosive wide receivers that are in the league right now. So, uh, you know, that shouldn't be a reason that that we don't take a take the guy that can come in and really turn this franchise around just because Adam Gaze is uh, a nincompoop. That's not what we should be doing. Because, again, we should just close up shop then. Just trade everybody off and shut it down until we can fire him. Like, that's not so, what we should be so doing. You what, we the, should be, what we should be doing is gaining uh, talent, you know, to help Sam Darnold out the best way that we can. And I believe that trading down, uh, again, unless you're getting a package where you're getting a player that is going to be a significant yeah. upgrade at the position of need here, and you're getting capital to where you're still staying in the range so that you can continue to address needs, I, I don't see your plan, Shaq. I, I don't understand it. So you telling me you rather watch Jamal go trade him to go to get more picks, but you don't want to trade back to get more picks? These yeah, players, we don't even know. Me, we don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, here, here's we the don't deal. Know, we don't know if they're good or not. Yeah, well, here's the deal. The reason why I talked about trading Jamal Adams was because it's two things. One, we still have Marcus May. Well, actually, it's three things. One, we still have Marcus May, right? So you can slide Marcus Mann to that spot. He's a great safety. I understand Jamal Adams is a great safety. He's a great player. I love him the same way you do. But when you look at this team, which is void of talent, completely void of talent, even though we went into this offseason with all this money, and we, what did we talk about? We're going to address the offensive line. We're going to get playmakers in here. We lost our, one of our best playmakers in Robbie Anderson. We're coming into this draft with a whole horrific wide receiving core. We have less weapons than we had last year, and we have the worst offense in the league. Our offensive line, can you necessarily say we got better? Not really. No. Connor, McGovern, upgrade, uh, Connor McGovern, upgraded center. You look at all the other moves we made, and we're like, mm. so we're still in need. We're still in need. And I get it. I love Jamal Adams. But you cannot tell me that you're going to pay a safety $20 million when you have no playmakers offensively and you got a franchise quarterback that is with, out, outside of this season, one season away, where you have to pay him. That's why, I'm, that's why I talked about boosting this offense. You're about to pay Sam 
there could be a upwards of 30 plus million dollars in the cap on the cap every year because of him. If you go into a situation where you have to pay Sam, which will be in a year where you have to pay him and you have question marks about him, you've done yourself a disservice because you'll never truly know a ceiling. We don't know. And I've talked about this on a show before. I need to know where you are on the scale. Are you closer to being Ryan Leaf? Or are you closer to being Peyton Manning? I need to know. I need to know, fam. And I need to know right now. Because if you don't know right now, we're done. If you give a guy an extension and he's not very good and you tie him, tie him to the franchise for the next five to six years, oh, baby, let me tell you something. And you're going to get a world of hurt. We don't want to hurt. You, so we got, we, we I don't want to make it done. It. We've got to get it done. And we've got to I don't want to make it here. I'm sorry. And that's what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. I, you don't know what we, what we might get for trading back. You never know. But trading your best player, we might get the same conversation, conversation doing trading back than, you know, trading them all. So basically we'll go back no, you don't, no, 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 no. to, that, to the that's Cowboys. Not, that's not we get the first that. and the third. But we play that's back, not, we might get the same thing. You don't know that, though. So that's we, not true because – because, again, as again what I talked about – hold on, let me finish. What I talked about with trading Jamal, I didn't just talk about addressing the offense. I also said with other picks, because, again, we could get more than two picks. You could end up getting two picks this year and a pick or two picks next year. That could also help you raise team talent. We're in need not just offensively. Our offense is horrific. I talk about that in nauseam because I understand that you have to build around a quarterback in this league because the Bills are doing it now with Josh Allen. The Ravens have done it with, with Lamar Jackson. Uh, the, the Cardinals have done it with their young quarterback. You look around the league. I mean, look what the Chiefs are, are, have done with Mahomes. They gave this guy a myriad of weapons. So unless you do that, the franchise quarterback is not going to be successful, especially if we're talking about building a guy that still is on his rookie year deal. Because once you've got to pay him, it's going to be horrific trying to build a team around him because it's going to take up so much. But even if you push the offense aside, right, let's push that aside. Let's talk about this defense. Corner. Big need. You can talk about Pierre Desir, one-year deal. Once he's gone, who's stepping up? If he decides to move on next year, you have no number one, and we're still trying to figure out who our number two is right now. Who's our pass rusher? We haven't had one since John Abraham. Nobody. What, what, what do you notice about all the good teams in the league? They have a pass, pass rusher. rusher. They have more. Some of them have more than one. We haven't had one since, like, what is it, 90-something? 95? <laughs> that, that's, that's illogical. You cannot win for, in for a league what? like this. You can't do that. You cannot win for in what? a league like that. So why? why? Again, I love Jamal. I do. But if I need to sacrifice him to build team talent, especially when we talk about how much he's going to want, I, I'm sorry. Look at what we've been doing. For last, we haven't been in the playoffs in 10 years. 10 years. He's been here how long? We have not been to the playoffs with him. He had an all-pro season. That's because he didn't have seven a team. Nine. Uh, uh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's his fault. So why is trading back so bad? Trading back is bad because we need impact players. And if you're passing up on the top impact players to then move back to maybe get some guys that will be able to come in, you'll get some solid players, possibly, but you're passing up on guys that can help you right now. If you're trading so back what? when there's a left tackle – hold on, hold on, Jack – if you're trading back when there's a starting left tackle, what are you doing? We don't have a left tackle. All the four guys we just named, you know, Beck and all these guys, starting left tackles. You're talking about yeah, trading away Beckton. from a starting left tackle. Yeah, okay. But you're talking about trading away from Most him. likely, Beckton might not be there. He's most likely this, not going to be at a left. Okay, but you still got Andrew Thomas that could be on the board. There's all these guys that can still be on the board. So yeah. you're talking about trading away from these these. You're talking about trading away from these guys that can come in and make an immediate impact. Did you not? These dudes are mostly right tackles. These dudes are most likely right tackles. They're not left tackles. Listen, and most of them are just come in. right tackles. Listen, and these guys can come in and play some left tackle. Come on now. You <laughs> ad nauseum. They're, they're, they're more mostly right tackles. No, I. You know, they're, they're mostly right, right tackles. tackles. Most of the top Listen, guys I, that people are talking about are more right tackles. Besides okay. back to back. Okay. If, and if maybe Josh Jones. Okay, if, if that's how you feel, Shaq, 
I respect, I respect your take, but that's why I say hey, we don't. But we don't know like that. that. We they haven't played it down in the NFL yet, Joe. So we don't know that. So why oh, take a chance Shaq, like Shaq? Shaq, if you're using that recipe, then you might as not. Well, I might as well not draft any of these guys. Do not. That, that's that's, that's what I'm a lot saying. Guys, you were lying about the draft, guys. and we haven't been able to draft for years. Literally for years. Isn't that why we made changes? Didn't you call in talking about how great Joe Douglas was? I remember oh, really? them. Hell no. no. Hell, we talked about he could defend that. that. I think I said I'm the one who said we, he couldn't figure out a kicker for him once. We don't know that. I said he's still up yeah. to he's still up to me. I never said Joe you Douglas said, was great. No, you said that he he was a guy that you brought in because you didn't like McCagney either. And you said yeah, I hate Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd rather I'd rather okay. him than Mike McCagney. Okay, so that and again, that's what I'm saying. That's the call that I remember. Okay. Here's the deal. Just because we've been bad in the past at drafting doesn't mean that we shouldn't we should sh- close up the shop on every draft. That's ridiculous. That makes no his, sense. In his draft, he's still up. He's still questionable. He had help during these drafts. I've been saying that Philly and Baltimore. He had help. Philly, he had help. Baltimore, he had help from Ozzie Newsom. So we don't know what he can do by himself. That's why I said that's all up for debate. Okay, so again, you have to give so. He has to have this draft in, right? So you have to allow him to draft players. So I don't trust him. Gives us, uh, and, and that's fine. That's why he last year Mike McCagney should have got fired, and we should have gave Joe Douglas a chance to figure out this draft so we can know what he can do, what he can draft, what's his strength to draft. draft. Listen, but now I'm not, I wouldn't take that chance with Jamal for that. Just just to watch him mess up the draft and mess up these picks like we did with Revis. Sheldon Richardson was the only person that came up good out of that pick, out of those picks. Listen, Shaq, if you are stuck in the if you're stuck in the past, you're doomed to repeat it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stuck. stuck in the past, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. You're doomed in the, you're We've been doomed stuck for sixty years. years. We've been stuck. Listen, listen. There have been other teams. <laughs> yeah, there have been other teams that have been horrific at drafting at times. They have brought a guy in at general manager put out a front office and has been able to change their franchise. There have been teams that have been snake bitten and been able to turn it around. We should be able to so show why, that. So why would you put all your trust into a man that couldn't figure out we needed a kicker and couldn't figure out we needed oh, play to at least make us somewhat com- competitive or at least put us somewhat over the hump into the playoffs to give us some type of spark and some type of hope playoffs. to at least make it seem like we're progressing? progressing playoffs <laughs> yeah. we're talking about playoffs you kidding me i don't know playoffs exactly listen I, listen Shaq, I, I don't know about playoffs i don't know about any of the stuff that you're talking about that's what i'm saying i, I want to okay i want to talk to you about the draft <laughs> let me just ask you a question because this is all right so let me get your thoughts on rugs because we're talking about judy and cd lamb constantly what are your thoughts about rugs and could you see him being taken at 11 over some of these other guys Mm, no, I'll take a tackle before I take rugs. Like I said, I I would take I would take the only person the only people that I would take at that eleven pick is is T D, maybe Jerry Judy, and Beck. Maybe that's really <laughs> maybe. Yeah. What did maybe. what did Jerry Judy do, to you, man? Did he like did he like did he like ruin a bet for you or something? I like feel that? like. Beat your, beat your favorite I feel like we won't do? use him. I feel like I feel like he's an Amari Cooper. That's all he is to me. He, I feel like he can disappear like Amari Cooper does. I feel like CeeDee Lamb is more DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins doesn't disappear in games. And I think Russ, I think what I think C D Lamb could do the same what DeAndre could do. See the only thing that I disagree with you about is I wouldn't not draft a player because I think my coach can't use him correctly. It's a much bigger problem. Like, well, you're like, oh, well, Adam doesn't use Judy right. right. Well, then, like, I'm taking the player. Like, and, th- and that's where Joe Douglas has to put his foot down and say, listen, this is the best wide receiver available. You make him fit in your system because he's that good. Like, you don't, like, start avoiding players based on your coach because that's just, like, especially, like, a wide receiver. Like, dude, I'd, I could not disagree you more with that. Anything. I mean, I'm kind of – yeah, we shouldn't draft. We should like, you know we what? Do yeah, we shouldn't do anything. Literally. If these receivers don't Might as well. Don't we didn't succeed the last five years. Might as well. It's a new year. Might as well not, bro. But, dude, oh, Shaq, come God. on, man. This is a whole new, 
a whole new front office, a whole new re- a whole new approach, a whole new evaluation scale, all new like even the staff that are here have a whole new. Based on what this is, his first draft. I haven't been impressed. I got to see the draft to be impressed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, listen, if, I'm as skeptical as you. Listen, I listen. I question a lot of things they did as a team last year during the season. I question some of the free agent moves this off season. But this is this is his time to shine. This is what he's brought here to do is to bring us this draft acumen that we haven't had in ten years. So this uh, until then, uh, John Dizik was a draft guru. Oh, he's Mike McCaffrey, a talent scout too. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh. If we don't give him the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to get more hate tweets. I got enough for record, so Shaq, thanks for calling, uh, it, man. We uh, appreciate. Uh, it. I wish I could take the bullets for you. Dude, uh, you so you bring out my negativity, man. And then when the show is over, I get blasted for three days because of you. Don't so, don't, don't, positive. don't blame Tyson, y'all. Just blame me. I'm taking the heat tonight. I'm taking the heat tonight. I'm with you, Tyson. Let's go. Have a good night, man. <laughs> Joe, what happened there, man? I let you. I, the minute he started yeah, on coach. the whole trade back to 18 and he ripped Jerry Judy, I'm like, this is all Joe. I'm like, this is your time to shine. And, man, listen, you know, first off, I want to thank Shaq for calling in. I love, you know, talking to him and going back and forth. Some people have, you know, their own perspective. And I, I respect his perspective, but, you know, I disagree with it. I disagree with it. If you're telling me we got to fold up the draft because you don't think our head coach is very good, then we might as well just call it a day. You shouldn't do anything then. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be concerned about free agency because there's a good chance that Adam Gaze is still not going to put together good offensive line schemes. We, we shouldn't do anything. We shouldn't be worried about Sam Darnold. We shouldn't care that our offense is horrific. We shouldn't do anything because we have Adam Gaze. Well, what happens after you fire Adam Gaze? Do you give the next coach the same lack of talent that you have here? No, there's still players that need to be brought in. There's life after Adam Gaze if we don't do well this season, particularly offensively. That, that's a horrific take. I just I, I can't get with it. But, again, I respect Shaq, and I love talking to him. Can't wait to hear from him next week. Yeah, like I said, I know like there's a certain type of lineman the Jets are looking for. Like They want this, like the more athletic guys, the versatile guys. And, you know, mm-hmm. There's a certain type of receiver that you want. But at some point, talent is talent. And if you have the top talent on the board in front of you, mm-hmm. you can be a draft board and say, listen, this is, not, this is the highest guy we have here. Like, you can't just start saying, you know what, we're not going to take Jerry Judy because he doesn't fit our system. Or, like, we don't see CeeDee Lamb in our system. Or, like, we're not, like, like, like we, what after I, what all I the years of bad receiver play. Like, just, yeah, what, yeah, that's what I don't understand. It's like, where, where do some people get on this high horse and say that they, we can even turn down talent like that? Like, what is wrong with, like, who are y'all? Who are some of Like, I just don't get this, like, part of this fan base sometimes. It's like, where are you coming from where you think that we can turn down guys that can come in and make immediate impacts and roll and trade down and do all this, up, like, and get away from those guys? We don't need guys like Jerry Judy. We don't need guys like, what, what are you talking about? If, those, if these guys are as close to a sure bet, that's the kind of move that we need to be making because we've lacked offensive yep. talent for I don't, I don't know how long now. I, I kept asking the question, you know, uh, two weeks ago on the show, when is the last time that we've had a homegrown number one wide receiver that has made a big-time impact here? Uh, I mean, people were talking about Santana Moss. That was uh, Lavernius Coles. Y'all know how long ago that was? All the while, we've had guys like Stephen Hill, Clowney, all these guys. Can, you can keep naming them. Darius Stewart, Chad Hansen, all these bums that we've had here. For years, offensively, a wide receiver. How could you not mention my boy Clyde Gates, man? You forgot Clyde Gates, dude. I didn't want to talk about Clyde Gates, dude. I didn't want to talk about Clyde Gates. Almost my boy Devin Smith. The other, yeah, all these other bums that we've had. Almost threw up. <laughs> like, come on, like, how are we talking about passing up that type of talent? I just, I, I don't, I don't understand this, man. I don't get it. Goodness gracious, so Joe. How do you? <laughs> How do you rank the top three receivers? How do you rank Lamb, Judy, and Ruggs? Oh, man. For me, I have it Judy, Lamb, Ruggs. But to me, C.D. Lamb and Jerry Judy aren't that far apart as as far as my rank is, kind of like 1A, 1B, but if you're forcing me to do that. um, To me, Jerry Judy is an unbelievable route runner. Unbelievable. Um, C.D. Lamb, to me, is a guy that after the catch is just, and Henry Ruggs 
And, you know, I don't like necessarily saying player comparisons because, you know, people kind of – I remember when we, <laughs> we took Quinn and Williams, people were saying he was the second coming to Aaron Donald and all this. You know, I, gotta, I try to stay away from stuff like that. But, man, his explosion, the way that he can separate the speed – a lot of people are screaming, dude, he looks like a Tyreek Hill clone. You know, I, I, uh, you know, it's there with him. Like, that dude is dynamite. Like, he's unreal. So, you know, that, that's how I rank those guys. I, I just think it's talented. But, again, there's other guys that are also talented in the, in the wide receiver court, too. That's why, again, it's so deep. I like Denzel Mims a lot. Of course, you know, my guy Pittman, you know what I'm saying, big body. Okay, red zone threat, you know. So, Justin Jefferson, too. Um, I like him, too, from uh, LSU. So, there's some guys there, man. Uh, we just got to gotta make sure we get the right guys, man. We've really got to invest you con- heavily in this draft. Would you consider Ruggs a reach at 11, or would that be a, would that be too high for him, do you think? Or that's a, I don't, you know, a good fit? Yeah, I, some pe- yeah, some people will say that that's a reach. I don't. I mean, to me... If CD's on the board, Jerry Judy's on the board, I would take one of them before Ruggs. Um, if there's a tackle on the board, I would take one of them before Ruggs. But, I mean, you know, if you feel like that's the guy you want to go with, I mean, I could see it, but I, I don't prefer him over CD or Jerry Judy. All right, fair enough. Joe is dropping some draft knowledge here, and I'm just watching him argue with everybody. <laughs> so we're going to go to – Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dude, I just went. I do the minute I heard Shaq's comments, I'm like, perfect. This is perfect. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is. He said, yeah. <laughs> Man, we're gonna go. Crazy. <laughs> we're gonna go to Victor and Yonkers. Victor, what's up, man? How you doing, guys? Yeah, I, uh, not too bad, man. We're trying to figure out this draft. Yeah, I was. I was listening to the first caller. Um, previous caller. I'm. I'm really opposed to trading. Um. Jamal Adams. I, I think that's a bad idea. Really bad mm-hmm. idea. I, uh, unless the offer is mind-blowing and someone's desperate and overpaid, even though it's going to be a high price for him, I wouldn't trade him. I, we drafted him. He's my favorite Jet I've ever seen, for me personally. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that would what's, be a really bad what's idea. What's the least you would take? What's the, what's the least compensation you would take? Like a first-rounder this year, a first-rounder next year? Like, what's the least you would take in return? If it's the Cowboys, I want one of their offensive linemen, and I want a first-round pick. And that's oh, that's asking for too much. They're not going to do that. Like the Tyron Smith yeah. and a first-round pick, I would do that. <laughs> that is, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, they're not. Gonna, they're not going to do that because they're, they're center too, though. So they're yeah, they're not going to do that. But like, just in terms of yeah. draft compensation, of what would be the package that you would take? Like, what would be, like, the least you would take? <laughs> I'd take a first-round pick next uh, this year, next year, and a, and a third-round pick. That's the least I would take. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to thank you for calling in. Look, you know, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the Dallas would ever do something like that. You know, no. And I hear people talking about two first-rounders. I don't know if you would get that or that you would get that for Jamal either. Again, Jamal's a great player, but he is a safety. Um, you look at the other guys that are around the league that have been moved for something close to that, in corners, it's been other guys like that, in you know, positions of impact. It's kind of tough to, to act for that, especially, again, when you have to pay him too. So you have to look at that. But, you know, kind of putting that aside, I want to get your thoughts on this draft, man, some of the players that could be available. I know everyone's, you know, hitting on this tonight. We're looking at the situation with the Jets. We're saying, hey, offensive line help, probably our number one need still. If you're sitting at 11, man, what tackle do you covet the most? And if they were there, would you take them? Me personally, I think the safest, if you're going to play safe and want the, the production you know you're going to get from this guy, I think it's Andrew Thomas. He, he's a monster. If, if you could look into the future and say, this guy's, physical attributes is going to go with production, then it's obviously him. But everyone's fascinated by him because of his physical attributes, his potential, what he could be. But what if we miss? You know, what if he he does, what if he he doesn't stay uh, disciplined and and watch what he eats? This guy's 6'7", 300-something pounds, right? What if he falls off the wagon that 
yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I hope I, my personal. I don't know if you guys feel this way about other drafts, other sports. I hope someone else takes him, and he doesn't fall yep. to us. Because if he falls to us, we're going to be forced to take him. And if we hit, beautiful. This guy might be the best offensive lineman in the draft. But if we miss, and imagine we didn't take one of the three receivers or Andrew Thomas or Josh Jones, I wouldn't reach at 11 to take Josh Jones, though, or Henry Ruggs. Uh, I would, I so would who would you, how do you, how do you rank the receivers then? Uh, it depends what you want. If you want uh, route running, I would take Jerry Judy first. If you want explosion after the catch, I would take CD lamb and Henry. So Ruggs, you're, uh, you're Joe Douglas. Who, who are you taking? Who would you take personally? I would take CD lamb. He just looks too explosive, way too explosive. Um, that's kind of uh, where the other like too. Yeah, he looks yeah. like a technician out there, uh, Jerry Judy. Like he just looks precise, and he's gonna he's, he's gonna he's gonna be a star. And CD Lamb, the way I look at CD Lamb and Jerry Judy, this might be a reach. You remember when Tracy McGrady was a star? It's like how you look at Tracy McGrady and Kobe Bryant. It's not who's better; it's what yeah. do you prefer. That that's how I look at. Yeah, we well, see. And, and you look at the NFL, the way the game is going, it's like you're getting these guys the ball in space, yards after catch, all that stuff. That's where this game is now. It's just it's a little bit different yeah. now. Now, is there a yeah. position uh, that, that they could take? Is there anything else other than offensive line and wide receiver the Jets could consider? Do you think a, like a cornerback could fall to them, or do you think they would consider anything else? Uh, I don't think so, and I pray as much as I like Jeff Alcuda, I hope he does not fall to us because it will not fix the situation. Our defense is just, if we were to choose him, our defense will just get better and better and better, but our offense is just going to get worse and worse and worse. It, it's, you're not giving Sam Darnold a chance, and then when it's time to pay him, are we going to overpay him because what we think he can be? At that point, it's, you yep. should know what he is and what he's not. Yep. No, that's, a, that's an excellent point. That's something we've been saying, too. It's like at some point you've got to build around Sam and make him the best he can be, like maximize his potential, his ability is we need answers now. Like you got to, we're getting further along his career now. We need to know exactly what he is now. What is your level of confidence with Joe Douglas and all of these new restrictions due to the, the coronavirus? Um, I I have a lot of confidence in him. Um, if if you look at uh, the draft, he didn't do everything we wanted. He didn't go and spend, you know, like like uh. He didn't give the kids what they want if he was the parent. He gave us what, what he thinks is fair to slowly build. Instead of trying to, you know, go crazy in one position and spend all this money. Like, he could have got Jack Conklin, $14, 15000000 million. But he probably looked at it like, I'm going to spend all that money on him. Is he really going to change this offensive line by himself? And I don't think Jack Conklin by himself would have changed this whole line. So he took some some um some risks with George Fant. I never even heard of the guy before this, but um with McGovern, I think that's a great solid piece. What if we do at eleven take Dredrick Wills? McGovern's gonna look even better next to that guy. Next to Andrew <coughs> Thomas. Yeah, that that's my I, I have confidence in him until 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 he proves me wrong. Fair enough. Victor, excellent call man. Thank you for calling and we definitely appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That was a phenomenal call, Jonah. He makes a lot of good points there, dude. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, what you're looking for, what's a good fit, what's not a good fit. And that's, you know, it's just, you look at the, the level of these players, man. It's just like, this is what we're trading down. I think it's just going to make me nervous. I, I just, you just want that stud, man. Like, you just want that guy to say, okay, here's our piece, and move forward. And not start to get cute and clever and, and outthink yourself yeah. and take some risk. Like, I kind of want to go with the, perceived known commodity. Yeah, yeah, and I want to thank the last caller for calling in. He was great. I'm, I'm right there with you. You want to make sure, like you, you just said, you want to get the stud. You want to get the guy that's going to come in and completely change your franchise, you know, at whatever position, whether it be in the left tackle position, give you something stable to build on for years to come where him and Sam be on the same page forever, or you want that wide receiver that is going to be a go-to with Sam for years to come to help lead your franchise to competing, you know, on a big-time level. So, I'm just hoping Joe Douglas makes the right decision. Yeah, it was funny because I saw two mock drafts today where Jeff Okuda went to the Jets at 11. I'm like, we'll go live right that second. 
the minute that pick got announced, Joe, we go live. And I oh, would yeah. curse for about three hours. I would be out of my mind. I would oh, just, no. just it'd be a, I'd get a drunken disorderly on the radio show. I'd be, I'd be out of my mind. I would yeah. just blow every gasket known to man. And I saw two mock yeah. drafts they did that. Two of them. <laughs> yeah. God, you know, and, 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 yeah, you know, and, and I've, I've heard people talking about this. And look, I, Okuda, Okuda is a phenomenal corner. But, dude, it's like, come on. When you look at this team, how in the <laughs> – I just don't get some of these mocks. It's like when you look at the team and you look at the – we were dead last offensively in the league. How could you possibly think that we should take a corner in the first round? <laughs> how? How can you look at that? Like, I'm wondering if some of these people – and it's no disrespect to anyone. But I'm just wondering if some of these people that do these mock drafts, it's like, do you look at the roster? How could you look at us and say – you know, with all the all the you know what, what we've had going on with the, the the lack of offensive talent, with Robbie leaving, and all, how could we look at this team and go, oh, wide receiver? Nah, go ahead and give him a corner. <laughs> what? That that makes no sense. It's like, come on, you know, I, I just don't agree with that at all. Yeah, and it's just about prioritizing need. Like you're saying, okay, it's like you're almost discounting the value of the. Like you're saying, you know what? Wide receivers a need, but we can get a lesser talent later on to fill our needs. But we're going to go with a good, with the great corner. Like no, no, no. Like it's yeah. that's, that's the we should be doing the opposite. Get that best receiver, yeah. and then get a get a lesser corner down the line, or not. You know, like a I, I, Joe, I would lose it. We would go live that second. Like I'm like I text you, but like, Joe, we're going, we're going live with this. <laughs> it will be yeah. no barred, and I'll just I'll unload for hours. I, I, I would just, I would, I would be outside of myself. I, I don't, cause, because that, to me, if you do something like that, that just screams that you just don't care about Sam Darnold. Like, to me. That, that would just be like, hey, no, they don't care at all. Because there's no way that you can justify that. There's just no way. With the, the great, at, hell, I, I, it, it, that's probably one of, if, if that's all that's on the board, that's the only way I can see us trade now. Because it's like, okay, well, all the, you know, the needs that we need to continue to gain and collect capital in this draft so that we can really go heavy offensive, offensively in the second round and really grab up a lot of these second round guys and hopefully you know, make something collective that's going to be a great wide receiver group so we can go out there and really attack people offensively. Because if you're telling me that we're going to roll into the season, what we have right now offensively, with maybe added a day three guy or something like that, Man, <laughs> with the schedule we got coming up, you're actually the trouble. All right, we're going to stay with the phones, 929-477-2651. We're going to go to our good friend Tyrone. What's up, man? Yo, Tyrone. Is he there? Is he pulling a Steve on us now? Uh-oh. Oh, come on, go. man. Don't do that. Don't do that, man. Come on, bro. This is See, Tyrone. This, this He's is, there. <laughs> no, nah, come on, man. That's that's not Tyrone. I know Tyrone, man. He's a good caller. And this stuff is stuff I've been talking about. This last people, week. Dude, this he people get to Steve last you. week. Well, you know, look, hey, man, sometimes, you know, tempers flare, people get into it, but everything over. was all right, man. That's you say over? Come on, man. Nothing is over come until on, we decided it. Man, right, Tyrone's we'll a good dude, the whole man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't have time for dead air. always bringing up the old. Man, you, you always bring up old stuff, man. We put that in the past, and we move forward. Now. Come on. All right. We're going to go to our good friend, NYSF Magazine. Jay, what's up, man? The sweep of the wheels got me moving up the line, man. I appreciate that. I roll you on my boy. We got the Coast of Oak Island on tonight, man. That means I got about 15 minutes uh, closer to watching it, man. I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> So, Jay, what is, we're, we're going into the draft here, and it looks like uh, you agree, I guess, that it's offensive line or wide receiver. Anything else would just be chaos, right? Yeah, but you know what? I'm, a part of me, after, after listening to your description of what's going to happen if they draft Okuda or something like that, um, or you know, <laughs> some kind of defensive lineman or something, like, oh, i got to say, as much as I'm a Jet fan and as much as, I, as, as, as hilarious as, as that situation would be, um, I say about about point five percent of me wants to see that happen, just so I can hear that show. I mean, we're we're so trained to uh. not have good football to watch anyway that like you know, and all of our entertainment comes all, all my Jets entertainment comes from like tailgating and like listening to talk Jets radio. So like that would make the show that much better. 
I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm obviously not actually rooting for that, but it, it, it wouldn't be the worst outcome. <laughs> uh, so it would be fantastic. <laughs> well, just first off, Jay, I want to thank you for calling in, man. Look, I want to get right to, into it. All right, you look at this situation at eleven. Some people are screaming, "We take a wide receiver, man." How do you rank the wide receivers in the first round, man? Who are your top three? Okay, so I'm going with with uh, with Tyson's move on this one and say. You know, I'll give you my, uh, my uneducated, just a fan, uh, you know, from watching a couple of college games. I'm not a big mock draft guy. I, you know, I don't really study these guys that much. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the anti-Mike McCagney guy in this respect. I know what position we need, and I just want to take, you know, uh, whoever our scouts determine are, are, you know, obviously we're supposed to have good new scouts now and a whole new scouting department and new, new processes in place and everything to make sure, you know, so just get, get me an offensive lineman or a receiver and, uh, I like Judy. I mean, I, I definitely like Judy. I, I think that, like, the, uh, you know, from, from the games I actually watched him play, and, you know, uh, the guy gets, gets open. I mean, the guy just runs the, uh, the, the, the full route tree, and he's just, I mean, you watch some of those, um, you know, some of those highlights of him, uh, you know, from, from uh, his, whatever, the pro day or whatever it is that, that, you know, he was out there just freaking toasting defensive backs, and, and you know, I mean, that, that guy's got skills. C.D. Lamb, obviously, um, you know, I, I'm a little bit, like, concerned about C.D. Lamb, I think, uh, you know, tra- with, with his game translating onto the uh, pro level and being a superstar. I think Judy is more, um, you know, can't miss, in my opinion. So I'd probably go those, those two guys one, two. Um, outside of that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I can't really sit here and, and start breaking down um, – you know, I'm I'm going to sound like a Steve here if I if I start talking about you know some of the some of the wide receivers that are a little bit further down because, um, you know it's it's just going to be uh, you know basically repeating stuff that I've read and I don't really like to do that so, uh, but I definitely have watched it you know a fair share of, of Judy play and and dude that guy is a beast. If we can get him, just get him, just just get him and you know you're 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 getting basically as far as I'm concerned the top top wide receiver out there and you can build around that obviously that's the weapon that Sam Darnold needs. Um, desperately. I mean, you're, you're, you, you, what you said before, Joe, was dead on. Dude, we got to find out what Sam Donald is. And if you're going to find out what Sam Donald is, you got to put weapons for, you know, in place for the guy. You can't just keep running out freaking, you know, Vincent Smith and, and guys like that and, you know, and then be able to get a full evaluation of what this guy is. You have to put the guy in a position to be successful. We haven't drafted yeah. offense in, like, in, or in the early rounds in, like, I feel like I had hair on my head the last time we drafted an offensive player in the first round. It's, like, ridiculous. So, yeah, defense is not an option. I don't care what happens. I don't care if this is the 19th draft in a row where the best defensive player in the history of football fell to us. We, you got to take offense. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay if we go wide receiver. My personal preference is to get an offensive lineman because I still feel like, you know, that our offensive line is dumpster juice at this point. So, you know, I, I think that we need to, uh, we definitely need to address that. Um, but I can't, I, I, I can't argue with, uh, you know, with the idea of going wide receiver in the first round. So, um, yeah, I would go Judy. That would be my number one guy. Now, Jay, based on the way the draft is set up this year, obviously all the general managers will be basically, you know, doing this draft from home, like a virtual draft from home. And it appears that most of the executives will be separated and not going to be in the same facility not in the same room as of now. That's what they're, they're saying. Do you see the draft having, especially like the, the second round going back, less trades just due to the communication challenges and the logistic issues? Uh, I mean, if there's going to be a team that screws it up, it's going to be us, right? <laughs> You're going to just see it happening. But um, I don't know, man. I mean, how much harder is it really to communicate from where they're at as opposed to like during the draft? Like, I mean, they're they're all – in their war rooms and everything, and, and what? I mean, if you want to propose a trade, you're doing it over the phone anyway. So um, yeah. I think with the technology that we have nowadays, uh, modern technology, I mean, I wouldn't imagine it would be too difficult to get in touch with a team if you want to get in touch with them and start talking, you know, talking trade. So um, I don't think it really should really make too much of a difference. I mean, I think that it's going to be interesting, to say the least. I mean, the, the one thing that's interesting is that everybody – like, you know, I, I've been on Zooms recently. I mean, you know, you jump on these, these conference, these video conferences and stuff like that, and there's six guys, you know, talking and everything. It's not the same as sitting in a room with them and, and you know, and having a conversation. I mean, it's definitely, you know, you can, you can discuss things and, 
Um, you know, but it's definitely, there's something about, you know, human personal interaction when you're sitting in the same room as somebody. And, you know, frankly, we had social distancing in our draft room last year. We had, be, we had no coach in that room or anything. So it was like, uh, if any team is prepared, prepared for it, we are. You know, we, we just operated a whole draft like that last year. So, I don't know. Well, see, I, I think, you know, I, I think is, that, like, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, but the other thing, too, is, like, you have that where the room could be separated, all that stuff, but with the, with the lack of medicals and the inability to have the in-person yeah. evaluation, no physical stuff like that, can you see Joe Douglas and the Jets kind of shying away from those kind of players just based on the fact that they can't take any chances? Like, they can't have uncertainty. They can't really take that much risk based on how much need we have. Do you want to know why I'm excited about that this year? So here's the thing. Like, in years past, right, um, I feel like there's just been so much over analysis of these guys, like these ridiculous tests that they give them and these ridiculous things. And then what happens is what they actually did and produced on the football field kind of gets pushed into the background and how they performed at the combines and how they performed on their tests and, you know, these wonderlick scores and all this other crap that people use to talk themselves out of taking the guy that they thought was the most talented on game day. I, th- that's, I, I feel like that, like, you know, you you really have kind of less of an excuse this year. Like, I, it's going to be awesome, I think, that they're going to be able to just draft guys based on talent. And it's not, you know, and, and yeah. I don't know if, that, if that's necessarily, like, the best in the world, but, I, but, but, you know, but from my perspective, the over-analysis is going to be kind of tossed aside this year. And, you know, and I think that, like, it's just going to be like, you know, what did you see? What did you scout? What's on his game film? And isn't that really, you know, truthfully what matters? I mean... You know, maybe not for a guy like Jachai Polite or something like that, but you know, we 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 never get it right anyway. So maybe it's like this is this type of bizarro year. Maybe we go like seven for seven in the draft this year and get a whole bunch of starters. Maybe it's exactly yeah, what we yeah. needed. Yeah, and, and even talking about you know drafting guys, there's still a road that you know you got to go down and kind of get them ready for the NFL OTAs, things like that. All of that could end up you know being gone because of you know the virus and what we're dealing with. We could end up, you know, not really having these guys ready until a training camp or even, you know, after that as a possibility. Are you concerned that if that scenario goes down that, you know, our coaching or our bad coaching could be highlighted <laughs> and players could not be ready, you know, for the season? Yeah, I'm, I'm very concerned about that. And I'll tell you what that, what, what's interesting to me in, in that regard is, uh, you know, we have – I feel like wide receivers, you know, more than almost anything else, takes quite a while for them to get acclimated to the NFL. Um, you know, even guy like you look at like uh, most rookie receivers. I mean, you go down the line, and, and their their rookie year is not like you know they're not coming out of the gates catching a hundred balls for fourteen hundred yards and and you know twelve touchdowns or something like that. It takes them a little while to get acclimated. Now you remove training camp and you remove OTAs, and he has no chance to get up to speed with, with, you know, with, with Sam Donald, whoever that wide receiver would be that you would draft. Um, I, it might be a safer play this year if you want to get production out of the guys to take an offensive lineman, right? I mean, it, it, it just seems to me that, like, uh, you know, that that would translate easier if you're just going to draft the guy and, and then basically have, like, a couple, like, two weeks of training camp and, you know, and have no preseason games and throw them into the mix, that a guy, you know, an offensive lineman might be the safest play in the draft. Um, you know, I, because you, you could, you could almost, if you draft a wide receiver that early and that's, this is my only concern about it is like, dude, you that's, could a, almost, that's a terrible take. That's a terrible take. Why? Do you, do you understand the risk? If you offense, if the offensive lineman is still a work in progress and he can't get caught to speed, he gets your quarterback killed. So the learning curve could be the Ooh. same. If the guy's not ready, I mean, you saw it with the giants. I mean, if they, they took a guy that wasn't ready and they forced him out there and he wasn't ready, he, he got Eli Manning. Destroy it. You're you're so you're that, concerned that, that you like Andrew Thomas, something like that, that 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 he's just going to be flat out not ready to to play the NFL level. Like you, you don't think he's plug and play? You can just get get him from you know from day one saying, like, and plug but, him in. But like, you say, what you're saying is the, the receiver, the receiver that's an elite talent may not be may not catch up to speed in time. That or it could be like a you know like you're worried about that. The offensive line got the same challenges when they have pass rushers coming off the edge that are flying past them and they can't get their hips, they can't turn and stuff like that or under see a blitz coming or communication issues, <laughs> they can get Sam Donald killed. So you think you're better off with Fant? You think you're better off with Fant at left tackle than Andrew Thomas at this point? I, I'd rather I'm take saying my I'm, I'm than not, Andrew Thomas. No, what, I, what I'm saying is 
No, I'm saying is that I'm not worried about the learning curve. I'm picking the best player available for my team and just flying with it. Like, no OTAs and no minicamp. It is what it is. I rely on my coaching staff to get these guys ready. If it's a wide receiver, have Sam Donald, have a Mark Sanchez Jets West out there and fly everybody out and practice with them, whatever it takes. But I'm not worried about the learning curve. Like, it's, listen, man, it's the best talent available. I'm taking them. Like, I'm not, you can't worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was the thought I was having because, you know, you see, like, a lot of these wide receivers, it takes them six, eight, ten, and maybe sometimes even a whole season you know, to to uh, to start really getting a grasp of the offense. And I think this year could be difficult, man. You know, it's it's we got a lot of weird challenges this year. It's like, you know, you have no clue how things are going to play out. Um, well, I'm dude, look at the offensive about line. The lack you have, of, you're going to have freaking how many new starters on the offensive line. The whole freaking line's going to learn how to play together. Man, it's I know, I know. I mean, but but <laughs> but I'm I'm terrified of Fant. I'm just really terrified of putting of, of the idea of Fant playing left tackle from day one here. I mean, I, it's like to me, God, like we don't have you know we don't have Russell. Wil- I mean, I, I love I love Sam Darnold, but he's not Russell Wilson, not yet at least. And you know, I think Russell Wilson was running for his life. Like that guy Fant yep. stinks. He's terrible. And, and it's like you know I understand that that everybody. It's like the thing I, I tweeted earlier on the week. It's like, you know, every free agent that the Jets sign, if you're a Jets fan, every free agent that, that they sign is always, always underperformed somehow, and, and the, the, old, the old team didn't get the most of him. And every guy that leaves, he was always, you know, he was always not that good and everything. So it's like, you know, fan, every, you know I, I saw all these people posting all these highlight videos of, like, you know, the best, like, <laughs> moments of fans' career, and it's like, dude, that guy stinks. <laughs> He's not good. Oh. He's going to get Sam Donald killed if he's our starter, which is why, like, like I want a wide receiver so bad. It's just a, this is why it sucks to me have so many holes. I want a wide receiver yep. so bad, but I also don't want to see Sam Donald get killed with a bum-ass left tackle like Fan. So, like, I don't yep. know what's more important at this point. I, 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 we, I want both. I wish there was a way to get both. And there is a way to get both. And we could trade okay. Bill Adams, but, you know, but, you know, but, 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 but Bill, I mean, you know, like, let's, Let's not let you know. Let's not start like getting out, getting getting everybody all fired up and ruffling feathers tonight because you know everybody everybody wants the next the Hall of Fame safety instead of protecting your quarterback. You know, so well, let's, you not, know. let's not bring that up and start yeah. making people angry because prime time will chime in in a second. He's going to call in right now and he's going to tell me I'm an idiot because you don't trade guys like Jamal Adams after you draft them. Right? That's, that's coming next. That's coming next. <laughs> Yeah, well, Joe, yeah, good look, stuff. Look, well, okay, good, Joe. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, look I, you know, I'm, I'm just listening to Jay. And, you know, look, we, we talked about this multiple times, and I, and I hear where people are coming from. But like you said, and I, and I said as well earlier, Jay, look, he's a great player, phenomenal. But in, we need to start investing in Sam. And we farted around. Hey. I know, you know, Primetime wants to call in and things like that, but or, or you know, get in here and, and probably go off. But, you know, was he going off and McCagney was doing what he was doing to this team? Because that's the reason why we're even talking about this. We have okay. farted okay. around for three years of this guy's right. deal. When are you going to allow him to show us what he has? Because if you're not what putting him in a position to... <laughs> yeah, can we just do that? that? Gonna, can we just do that? Do What's it? so hard about that? Just get that man it, in, and then you don't have to worry about the left tackle, and then we can draft the wide receiver, and you don't have to trade Jamal Adams. How about that? Yeah, it, Let's get that done. It, I'm telling you, it, it, just, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. You've got to do something. And you've, not, just, not just to address, again, the offense, but there's also a, there's a void of talent on defense, too. And I know people are excited because Jordan Jenkins is back and all, and Pierre Desir, all these, those are one-year deals. One year uh, deal. Those guys could be gone next I think year. We, I think what we should do is we should bring Primetime on to defend themselves because Primetime's getting shots taken at them. So let me bring on Primetime. Hey, man. Hey. <laughs> Yo, Kev, what's up, man? Kev, you want to defend yourself? Hey, what's going on? You want to defend yourself? Cause take I, 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 I work hard. I, I mean, I feel like I have uh, a lot of things to address. So, I mean, we want to start with Jamal Adams. I mean, we're going to sit here and talk about how we haven't built through the draft yet. The best player we've drafted in arguably like 10 years, we're going to just trade him away for more draft picks. Yeah, I mean, look, that's what that's what you have yeah. to do when you're a bum ass team with a bum ass roster. You have to take the assets who have value and okay. Them. So again, we're going to talk about the roster. Yeah, yeah every single week we talked about the head coach not being able to use these pieces right. So which is it? Is it the head coach who can't use these guys, or is it that these guys aren't talented? 
You're right. It, you can, the answer to that you is more than one all of the above. <laughs> Yeah, right. not, partially. Not, partially. That, that, partially. Exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, you see plenty of examples of guys going elsewhere away from Adam Gase and performing. Or guys like Le'Veon Bell, who was a Hall of Fame talent, he comes here, doesn't do anything. But, 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 no, but, but Kev, who, who's down to throwing the ball to him and who's protecting him? We, don't, we, have, we have him throwing the ball to Vincent Smith and, and the, the corpse of Quincy well, Nunwa. And 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 Jameson Crowder and and we have and we have and we have Fant protecting him and that's gonna that's a big right. damn problem, okay, so, dude. All right, so let's let's start with the receivers. Let's let's go piece by piece. Let's start with the receivers. It's not Mike McCagnan's fault that Robbie Anderson's no longer here. That Joe Douglas didn't pay Robbie Anderson, a guy that we all thought was a solid number two receiver for the money that he signed for. We all wanted him back, yet we decided to go Perriman. Fine. Now we go into the draft. Wait, wait, wait. We still need we still need two wait, receivers wait, going into the draft. And wait, in wait, this draft class, stop, stop, hold on, I'll give you a second. Wait, 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 stop. In this no, draft no, no, class, wait, wait, I don't see any reason that Joe Douglas is a great talent evaluator, like we all think he is, in one of the most talented wide receiver draft classes that we've seen in the last decade. There's no reason why we can't get two receivers in this draft. Go ahead. Wait, so so what, you're te- what you're telling me again, Kev, and, and this is what I talk about with you, because you're constantly still trying to back McCagney. You're constantly still trying to I'm defend not. him. It's not. I'm okay, saying Robbie Anderson's a good I, number no, no, two no, receiver, I, I, which he is. Yeah, I gave, you, I gave you time to talk. Let me finish. Yeah, Robbie is Robbie a, a, a decent number two, but you said, oh, it's not his fault that Robbie walked away, but it is his fault that we didn't have talent at any other wide receiver position. It is what his does fault. Do that paying Robbie. Number one. What does that have to do with uh, anything? Be, because, because we wouldn't he have to. You gave Perriman $8 million. Dollars. No, no, no let, let me finish. It, it, again, right. we wouldn't have to have Perriman or any of these other guys if you weren't busting out drafts. If, if you weren't drafting guys like Devin Smith, who was trash. Robbie Anderson was an undrafted free agent. It's the same thing. Oh, okay. He's a number two receiver. He's one, and he's one guy. You bust And Jamison Crowder is a very good slot receiver. Devin and if you took the wide receiver Devin like you want at pick 11, that's a great trio no, no. of receivers. So what are we complaining about? No, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because we shouldn't have to worry about that because that talent should already be here. That's what we're talking about, Kev. And that's what I'm saying is you don't get all this talent. Okay, we're talking and, about and it's not. And that's why McCagan deserves to be fired. Finish. I don't dispute let that. Yeah, let's deal with what we have here, let's which could be a great receiving court if we do the right thing. No, 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 no. It wasn't hard. Again, you're excusing him. You're, you're excusing him yet again, and I'm bringing this up. You're doing what? About, oh, the, Robbie, Robbie walked away, so it is what it is. We, no, Robbie walking away. Joe Douglas was the one. He didn't trade him. You're Joe awesome. Douglas put him off for nothing. And my and Mike wasn't here to do anything and today. Mike McCagnum was the one that didn't better this offensive line. Mike McCagnum was the one that didn't get us weapons at wide receiver at all. Mike McCagnum was the one that did. The so Robbie wasn't a weapon. So a good number two that we have said is a good number two that we criticized Gates for not using correctly. He's not a good receiver. Okay. Behind that, that's the problem with this football team is there was never no talent put behind that because he was busting out drafts. There's never been a head coach to use any of the talent that we have. We went from Jeremy Bates and Todd Bowles to Adam Gase and Darrell Loggins. How do you evaluate Sam Darnold and the pieces that he has you know for what's that? Crazy? You know what's crazy? You continue to complain about Adam Gase. Your boy, McCagnan, hired him. He's and that's fine. That and again, that's the another reason, reason he deserves to be so hired. It doesn't that. change the landscape it's of the roster, though, that you keep reflecting. So you don't answer. We're talking about. We're talking this about roster is more than enough power if Joe Douglas has to be a factor in our presence. You keep passing that up, Kev. You keep acting like, oh, that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. We understand Robbie walking away. He walked away. But guess what? There should have already been talent here behind that. And it's not here. So, so that's an excuse for letting talent walk? That talent. Because you need talent, you, you let talent walk over $2 million? million? Look, it is what it is. He walked away. That's not, what I'm, that's not my point. My point is we have to do whatever we have to do to procure that talent. That's what I'm saying, and that's exactly what Exactly. You keep, keep building blocks like Robbie up. Anderson, a guy who had chemistry with Sam Donald. You let them grow together, and you find him number one to put next to him. Then you let, uh, you let Crowder do his thing in the slot. Herndon, Griffin, you got two tight ends. You got Le'Veon Bell in the backfield. What are we complaining about at that point? Go get Trent Williams, and you have yourself an offense. Well, he didn't want to pay Robbie. So it is what it is. But there should be talent. But let's play Mike McCagnon on that. And you're, you're the yeah, yeah, because I, Mike McCagnon didn't do enough. He didn't draft well. That's why we don't have that talent. That's but that is not an excuse up. for you letting Robbie Anderson walk. Oh, my Lord. You don't I, get I understand. Let's be fact that they the 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 this team no back. I totally understand that. that. But that. let's not act like this should be a three- to four-year rebuild and that Joe Douglas isn't working with anything here. That's a completely ridiculous take. Guys, why, why exactly did we have to – listen – 
I'm with Brian what, Cowan. What, what, what franchise? Exactly we have what franchise with a top young quarterback with a good head coach doesn't win in the history of football? You pair a, a franchise quarterback with a good head coach, even with little talent around them, they usually win. And we have some pieces to work with, and we have draft picks. We don't. They don't have a good coach. And there's a guy like Williams there coach. that we can go get. Well, Sam got Sam was sick though, so they won seven games. Oh, okay, yep. Sam was out a couple games, so maybe Adam Gase is good. <laughs> we'll see, <laughs> oh, and, and, and that's the goal. Do not leave any excuse for Adam Gase not to produce. Leave no excuse. Get Trent Williams, draft a receiver at eleven, draft another receiver in round two if you have to. Do whatever you need to do. Give as much talent as you have to for Donald and Gase to succeed. Leave no excuses. And if they don't, guess what? You bring in a new coach, and he's going to have talent to work with. Yeah. Joe, Joe, your thoughts? Look, I, I don't like I said. I don't think Adam Gaze is a very good coach, but I also think that there's issues on this roster. I think Joe Douglas is doing whatever he needs to do to address those issues. Robbie, letting Robbie go, do I think it was a smart decision? No, I don't necessarily think it was a smart decision. But also as well for what he was asking, we all talked about that there was a threshold for what he was asking. If he was asking for more than a certain amount, I talked about it nine to ten. That's about as far as I was willing to go for what it looks like. Hey, he moved on. He got his money where he wants to get it. They didn't want to pay him. But to sit here and act like, oh, well, we shouldn't explore trades for players on the team. Oh, we shouldn't lose, look to move Adams because we just shouldn't look to do that because we got to build through the draft. When this team is void of talent and you can make a move, I don't want to lose him either. I don't. I think he's a great player. But to act like, oh, well, he, we don't draft well, so we just got to stick here. Dude, there are so many needs on this football team. So many. I think people are truly just being blinded. I get it. You love Jamal, but don't be so de- attached to Jamal that you're deep. There's nothing to do with being attached to him. They're, look, they're, look at the defense when he wasn't playing. What was it against the, the Ravens late in the year? I mean, you, you talk about we have the players. You lose Jamal. That's, that's another that, 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 that you need to sell. That, that's what, it's yeah, not just as simple as putting Marcus May back there. Kev, Kev, to, to be, be to fair, fair, they also got posted with Jamal. Exactly. I was just about to say. They got to with Jamal. Did you watch? Did you watch those but, games? Did you watch that? Doc that like Jamal is part of the problem. Though is completely ridiculous. He hasn't had a. I'm not actually part of the problem. He's 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 a valuable asset. You can get something in return for. Is all I'm saying. Exactly. And if he wants to get paid twenty million dollars a year as a safety, we can't afford to give twenty million dollars to a safety right now. You exactly. can't do it. And, and, and not. Give him, and, yeah, and, and not. And not just that as well. You were, you just talked about it. even sixteen. That's. that's in, anyway, as, as you just said, Kev, <laughs> look at the defense. We didn't have many guys. If you move him and get picked and capital back, you can also address other holes on the defense. Because it's not like sure, we have Joe Douglas. The talent evaluated that we have here that he draft well, he again, finds those pieces and don't have around, and he puts on the top pick. And we add talent around Jamal Adams. No, 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 you need to start getting capital to build this football team because you're going to have to pay Sam in two years. You're going to have to pay him. You might have to pay him $40 million a season. He might eat up thirty million start drafting off your cap. And you cannot sit around and joke around for these next two years. You can't do that. Because if you sign him to that money and you have question marks about him, because, again, we all love Sam as well. I know we talk about Jamal all day, but we all love Sam too. But we all have questions about who he is at this point. Because, yeah, we think he's great, but he didn't necessarily take the step we all wanted him to take this year. And a lot of that was due to there's some coaching there. Adam's just, uh, Adam Gaze is trash, but a lot of it was due to horrific play, horrific offensive line play. He had next to nobody to throw to. That's not good enough. When you look around this league and look what other teams are doing for their How does Sam Darnold do better as a rookie with that, almost that same offensive line? So, again, I don't, yeah, I don't want to hear that, that, that play. Still here. It's that coach terrible is coaching. I was just about to. Well, I, again, that's, that's why I can't win this argument. I understand that. Because, again, we're probably not going to see a whole lot of progress this year, so I don't even know what we're fighting about. But... Okay, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for causing all this chaos, man. I'll, I made one little joke about Jamal Adams. Look what happened, man. Yeah, a four-way World War fight. <laughs> I don't know. Come on, let's talk about it. That's a good night, man. Oh, well, Kevin, stay on, dude. Kevin, stay on. What Who's I want to know is, what are you? 
what are your thoughts on the draft now? So now, what do you see happening at 11? Do you see us going offensive line or wide receiver? Like, how do you see it playing out? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you guys on that part. I mean, I, I don't think that this team can afford to go anywhere else. Sam has to be the priority. Giving Gase all the pieces that he thinks he needs has to be the priority. So you got the, the four main tackles. I think if any one of those guys uh, were to fall to 11, I, I think that almost has to be the pick uh, unless you make a trade for Trent Williams or something like that. And if you do make now, a trade how, for Trent Williams, I think that would be awesome to be able to go into the draft with him and then you know possibly have your pick of receivers at 11. Now, how do you rank the receivers, the top three receivers? Well, I put Judy and Ruggs pretty much like in a tie at the top. Um, different kind of guys. Judy's obviously just a, a master route technician. I mean, he could do it all. He's got the athleticism to burn you. Um, great hands. I mean, just all-around great receiver. Um, with Ruggs, he's just more a dynamic guy. You give him a little bit of a crease, he's going to take it. And the reason I put him over C.D. Lamb, and I know a lot of people written me for this, but I think his game just translates a little bit better to the NFL, where like that speed you have to prepare for, it's going to cause you know defensive coordinators to stay up all night. And again, if he does get that little crease, he's going to take it. Where I look at C.D. Lamb's game, and I, I still think he could be a number one, but I just see a lot more plays where you know he, he catches in, he's, you know, there's not a defender within like five yards of him, or you know, his big plays are you know, breaking three, four, five tackles, where at the NFL level, I don't know if that's going to you know, necessarily happen as easily. So I think he might have a little bit more to, to learn in his first year. Yeah, and Pop, look, I know we talked about those top guys. We, we constantly mentioned those names, but who's kind of your tier two wide receivers? So I know a lot of people kind of juggle those, those rankings as well. Who are your top three receivers, say, in round two? Well, I mean, there's a lot of guys that I think are, you know, fringe round two that are starting to get, you know, talked about a lot more going into round one. Um, a guy like Justin Jefferson, I don't think he's going to be available anywhere close in round two. I think, you know, he's starting to even climb into the mix, you know, into that top three, top four range. Um, you know, some people think he's right up there with Judy as far as being a great route runner. Um, I look at a guy like Brandon Ayuk, who's, you know, just great yards after catch. Um, Denzel Mims, who had a great combine, uh, 6'3", from Baylor. Um, a lot of people talk about him just not being – um, I guess having a, a well-rounded uh, route tree, I guess, you know, Baylor, they didn't really run an offense where he was asked to, to do a whole lot there, so they think he has a lot more room to grow. Um, other than that, maybe like Donovan Peoples-Jones, Colin Johnson, guys that are just, you know, 6'6", six, 6'4". Six, six, There's a lot of big targets in there, you know, in the uh, second, third round. So uh, I think that, you know, if, if you're able to get your speedster early on um, and then you target, you know, your red zone guy in round three, you know, I think that might be uh, an option. And even going back to the linemen, man, because I know a lot of different people have a lot of different feelings about these guys. Who's your top lineman, and who do you think is actually going to be there at 11? You know, uh, you look at so many different mocks, and I've seen the top four probably rated every single which way, you know, from one through four, four through one, I mean, backwards, forwards. You know, I, I would probably put Andrew Thomas at the top just because, you know, throughout the season I, I feel like he was the consensus best guy just as far as technique, um, athleticism, long arms, just a, you know, a safe left tackle that's you know, going to be an anchor there, no questions. Um, a guy like Becton, um, you know, a caller earlier, he mentioned the size, you know, 6'7", I think he's like 370. Uh, you worry about that a little bit as far as agility goes, especially for the Jets. Uh, it, they seem to want more athletic offensive linemen. Um, and I know the comparison a lot of people make is with the Ravens, with Orlando Brown, you know, similar size. But they also set him up, you know, for a lot more success. They put a tight end next to him, things like that, where he's able to, you know, latch onto a defender a lot more easily. So I don't know if Beckton would be the best fit for the Jets, but then the other two guys, uh, Wirfs and Wills, you know, those guys are athletic freaks, um, you know, probably right tackles immediately, and, you know, I think they would be good fits also. Yeah. Is there an offensive player in the first round that concerns you that you wouldn't want the Jets to take? <laughs> I mean... Kind of like Jay said, when you've gone a decade without taking offense in the first round, I mean, just taking anybody, I, I, would, be, I would be thrilled. I mean, there's really nobody that has a lot of con – I mean, a, a guy like maybe uh, LaVisca Chenault, um, you know, who had, I think, a hamstring injury during the combine. Um, anybody that has injury, a history attached to them, uh, I guess would be, you know, somewhat of a concern. But, um, you know, the guys that we're pretty much talking about, the three receivers and the four alignment at 11, uh, I don't see any way they can go wrong with any of those guys. And what, what are your thoughts on just the way this, this draft's going to go down with just the, the, all the restraints with the, the front office and stuff like that? Do you see any concerns or any logistic concerns that could be a problem for any of the teams going forward? 
Uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I, I don't really know what to expect. I mean, you would think with technology being the way it is and at least knowing, you know, weeks in advance that you're going to have the opportunity to, you know, test things out and hopefully they do, like, you know, some mocks just to, you know, prepare for different things that might pop up. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Hopefully, you know, we have our ducks in a row and Joe Douglas is on top of things, but you just never know. And do you think this will be the, the first time we really see the the Gase Joe Douglas dynamic, where it's like you know we you know last year basically it was McCagnan and Gase kind of brushed his hands of every player saying I didn't want none of these guys. This was McCagnan's players. Yeah. This is kind of the first year where it's going to be supposedly both their you know their dynamic of the guys they want. His true his true players, I guess. Right? Is that the way we can look at it? Well, yeah. Well, I, I think it was Manish who did the article today where you know Joe Douglas you know was talking about the uh, yeah, it was the new draft right. process and how he kinda, he's kind of bullish on his guys where, you know, maybe in free agency he'll defer a little bit more, um, you know, to what the coaching staff wants, but he'll ask for, I guess, like a prototype, you know, like what kind of receiver do you need? You need a guy that needs, you know, to be able to do A, B, and C. Okay, I'm going to draft this guy and maybe not give as much input with the coaching staff, just kind of, again, just getting that prototype. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how much he defers to Gase. And, you know, I hope this is mostly just Douglas doing his thing, but you never know. And I guess the last thing is, do you have any last comments or debates for Joe? Because you guys, it seems like you're like vinegar and oil here. Do you have anything else you want to discuss? Oh we have God. you both available. I mean, I just want to see if you know. I, I, I mean, you know, breathe on. Not, 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 to rehash, not to rehash the old argument, but I guess if we're oh. really searching for the money to pay Jamal Adams, just cut Avery Williamson already. <laughs> or trade him for a late round pick. Something. <laughs> We got peanuts. I mean, now, that, man. That, that's half. That's that's half his contract right there. And then you still have Josh Bellamy making like two million dollars. I mean, there, there's money for Adams. Yeah, it, your thoughts, Joe? You know, look. Um, you know, if, if that's how prime time feels, that's how he feels. <laughs> like I said, I want to see this offense get upgraded this season. You know, you're not gonna pull me into some screw match again with prime time. He knows how I feel. <laughs> you know about these things. <laughs> You know, not going to get my blood pressure up. All right, that's not happening. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, this team's got to get better. It's got to get better, and we got to do whatever we can to put weapons uh, Not getting better for inside don't. linebackers. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When you're getting the production that you can get from him, you guys will see. It's okay. It's all good. It's all we good. we got to watch it. We're good. I'm telling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right. So, again, Williamson, a guy that has had great production, you put him out there with Mosley, we could be oh, wait, hold a, on, a hold tandem on. right there to be a force. Wait, hold on. I, I fact-checked. I fact-checked because I always do this. Avery Williamson was a fourth alternate for the Pro Bowl. Yeah, Pro Bowl He had never alternate. been to the Pro Bowl. He was a fourth alternate. I, I just wanted to make sure we have our alternate. You know, facts correct. Yeah. Fourth okay. alternate. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, well thanks for that, uh, McCagnus Porter. Not first, second, or third. You know, fourth. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Cagnus supporter, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good talking to you. <laughs> We're going to go to maybe Tyrone is back now. Let's see if Tyrone is here. Tyrone, you here, man? Yo, yo, what up, what up, what up? Sorry about that, man. Oh, I apologize about Dude. that, man. I had to click. You can't, you can't rip Steve. You, huh? you, you can't rip Steve, man. That give us dead air, man. It's just. <laughs> oh come on, yo, man. listen, come listen, on, dude. man. He oh, did last on. week. They had beef last week. They had uh, beef last yo, week. Yo, nah, they have you know, no beef. I know. Man. Come on, I, I know. Man. I know. Everybody wants to know how Tyrone is gonna respond, but I appreciate Tyson giving Steve the truth because um. You know, I mean, I'm six eight, bro. I'm like three fifty, Steve. I don't, I don't know if you want to do that, big fella. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, but um, you know, I mean, we, I, I, on, think, I think Steve was joking. I think he, I think he woke up. Tyson was like, uh, Tyson yeah. was like, yeah, Steve. I don't know if you want to do that. Well, you know, Tyrone, I was really joking. I mean, you know, it's all good. But um, yeah. Steve, I will see you. I will see him. I wanted, you know, I see him. I wanted the, the um. Hopefully in L7, you know, one of the games, and we'll see what happens, you know what I'm saying? So we'll go from there. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> well, you I know, mean, I, Joe, I, I, don't, I, don't I, don't take, I don't take threats. I don't take threats lightly, Joe. I mean, someone threatens me he physical, <laughs> physically. He wants to express himself in a physical manner, Joe. What am I supposed to I do? I'm, I'm scared for my I, I fear for my life now, Joe. I'm about to defend myself. I don't know. <laughs> You know, wait, wait, wait. Well, I, I don't think, first off, I want to thank you for calling in Tyrone. I don't think that he was expressing himself in that. I don't think it was to threaten you at all. I think he just wanted to see you, shake your hand, 
and just, you know, have a drink. Uh, that, that's Tyson. all we need, man. Tyson. Water. Can water. I ask you a question, Tyson? Tyson, can I ask you a question? Tyson, Tyson, can I ask you a question? Tyson, did he serve with Tyson? Okay, thank you. That's what I I mean, he was getting... I don't. Yeah, I, 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 I heard the same thing, man. I, so, so Tyler, we'll go, on, as, we go to, as we go to the draft, man, what do you we, – we talked a lot this whole offseason about upgrading the offensive line, you know, trying to upgrade wide receivers, and now we're a couple weeks away from actually doing that. What are you looking to do here? Do you think one of these top four linemen will be there? And if they are, would you go with the fourth best lineman or the best receiver available? Okay, first of all, when, I've been saying this the last couple of weeks, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep staying on the same level and in, in the same point, man. I mean, I don't think Joe Douglas wants the fourth best tackle, and then you never want to say about taking a tackle, right? You, listen, everybody's talking about taking my um, old boy from um, Tennessee, right? That went to the Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know why he was available this season? It's because he didn't sign his fifth year option because he he stuck up the joint three years in a row and had one good season. So these guys are on guarantee, man. I'm telling you, man. Like I know we need I know we need some more and we need we need some more offensive help. But why take you know what I'm saying two guys who play on the right side? You want to just throw them on the left? They're just gonna transition like that? No. It, listen, it's no OTAs. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a crash course for these guys. And you want to put these guys in to protect Sam that never played in the NFL against grown men? That makes no sense to me. Why not take a receiver who is very talented, very you know what I'm saying, very very agile, quickness. You know what I'm saying? That can really give Sam a major target. Listen, we keep talking about offensive line. I mean, so far he's done that. He hasn't fixed it completely, no. But listen, everyone's acting like this is supposed to be a one a one season fix. We suck in five draft picks, and you want you want Joe to okay, Joe, fix it right now. No, it's not going to happen like that. It's going to be a process. Now, the 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 faster the process, the better. But I say take a receiver. You have to take a receiver. I love it. And uh, you know, I listened to our man Spotty last week talking. I love Spotty. That's my guy right there. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but knowledge. Jim and CJ, great show. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying to you, and I'm gonna say to anybody else, if you take, if I take the the third or fourth best tackle when you can you, when you can sign a guy or or go in a different direction, but a receiver, you're not taking the first, second, or third best receiver. You got a chance to take the best receiver in the draft. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I know that that's not always a guarantee, but you want Sam to be to elevate and to be great. Stop giving them subpar receivers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Stop giving them yeah. subpar yeah. players to make him go forward. It makes no sense. Anybody logical that wants to think that Joe Douglas is going to he got we have seven draft picks. There's no way he can fix all holes with seven draft picks. It's not going to happen. We don't have a lot of money, you know what I'm saying, on, on the cap. So he did, he's doing what he can do to, to get a solid foundation. But the players he's bringing in and the players that he's brought in have been solid contributors to the league. They're, they're solid players. And that's what I need. Now, if Joe Douglas hits third, fourth, or fifth round and maybe get a player in the sixth round that could be that could contribute in some kind of way, who can be mad with that? But everything's not going to be yeah. fixed in one in one uh, one off season. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want to thank you for calling in, Tyrone. You know, but look, I hear what you're saying. But at the same time, you know, you're talking about Sam, you know, not necessarily having the weapons there, wide receiver. I get that. But if he doesn't have time because he doesn't have a guy that can block worth a damn, does it any of that matter? If we draft the best wide receiver, we can't give him the ball, just like a lot of people were screaming about Robbie this year. That, hey, Robbie was open here and here and there, but Sam couldn't throw him the ball if he was running for the life. What, what does it matter? Even if you get the third or fourth best tackle, that doesn't mean that you're still getting a good tackle. You know, even though you're getting the third or fourth best guy, if you still get a good tackle, why not still make that move? I hear what you're saying okay, about so wide receiver, but there's such a need at left tackle. It's like, man, if one of those guys there is screaming at you, we've seen the effects of not having adequate blocking all this season. We see what happens. But Joe, you why would you? Let me ask you a question, Joe. Let me ask, okay, Joe, let me ask you a question. Have we improved our line at all this off season? At all? No, no. I, mean, I, I, I don't. I, no, I mean, listen, I, not up to, not, to listen, not up, <laughs> not up to the cowboy standards. But are we a better offensive line than we were last year? I don't. I don't think. We're, I don't think we're much better. I, I don't. Well, let what? me tell you why. Let, let me tell you. Why. Let me tell you why, Tyrone. I think Connor McGovern is a, is a is a step up. I think he's solid. But Sant at left tackle, no sir, no sir. I don't I mean, think okay, Sant okay, is better Joe, than Joe, Joe, I don't. Joe, and if okay, you look at our right Joe, tackle now, spot, you're talking no. about starting Chuma. No, no, sir. No, sir. I, Joe, okay, I agree. Okay, Joe, I'll, give you, I'll give you that, Joe. But let me ask you a question. We had five different starters on offensive line last season, Joe. So how mm-hmm. is this not an improvement of where we were last year? You know, listen, this is not well, a problem. It's not an improvement you know, because the guys aren't better. 
These guys aren't. These guys aren't. It, well, again, Connor McGovern is. It, I know, okay. it's, a, it's a slight step up. But Alex Lewis was on this line last year too. You're talking about guys that we watched okay. him get beat against the Dolphins. Uh, Van Brian Brian Winters. That guy's a journey. Yeah, him and Brian Winters, <laughs> no. and they're both still here. No. Van Van Roten but, is a guy that's a journeyman guy. I mean, you look at these guys. Like, did we really get better? That's my biggest question. That's why I've been a, a well, big been, advocate been, of trading for Trent Williams. But I don't think I've you can listening. look at this line and be like, oh yeah, it's much better than it was last year. Anybody saying that? I I, I wonder. Because uh, okay, you well, can't tell me that Chuma Adoga starting at right tackle is like, oh, yeah, we're there. Or Fant, who literally was a sixth offensive lineman. He used to come in as a sixth offensive lineman against the Seahawks. He couldn't beat out Jermaine Ifedi for a starting right tackle spot. He was whole, he, When Russell Wilson was running for his life, that guy was blocking him before he got hurt. So, okay, Joe, yeah, I got a question for you, Joe. some issues there. Go ahead. No, okay, Joe, I'm, okay, this is what I want to say, man. Listen, I'm not saying if it's going to be fixed automatically, but Sam having no weapons is good. Is a good is a good idea for you? You know, I mean, Robbie no, being no, no, no. I, receiver. I, hold on, no, 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 yeah. hold on, let me ask you a question. Go ahead, go ahead. Let me finish. Robbie being Sam's best receiver, how has that helped Sam progress and get better? I'm, I'm asking. Mm-hmm. So you want to bring okay, in somebody yeah. that – Mm-hmm. How can you get this guy better when you're bringing in subpar receivers? Please explain well, this to me. Please, let, let please me tell me how we're just going to find okay. gold in the third round receiver. You're going to find a starter, a number one receiver in the third round. Stop playing with me, yeah. man. Stop no, I, I'm not. I, I, I'm not necessarily. Well, I mean, you can find guys later on. That's not what I'm saying. But I hear what you're That's saying. Right, yeah, Sam you does. Number one Hold on. Let me let me finish, Tyron. Let me finish, Tyron. Let me finish. <laughs> Let me, you ask me the question, you don't let me answer. <laughs> let me finish. Look, I get what you're saying, but if Sam is running for his life, what, what if, if, if nobody's blocking and Sam's getting crushed, does that help him? No. At least if we have a solid offensive line, we can run the damn ball. We can't even do that. <laughs> so if you can't run the ball, if you can't get guys – hold on, let me finish, Tyrone. If you can't get guys blocked, if you can't run the ball, then what good does that do for Sam? And, again – there's guys in the second round that can make impact. I'm not saying that they're Jerry Judy, sure. T.D. Lamb, or Henry Ruggs. Sure. But, For real? That, that, yeah, dude, there's guys. Mims can make impact. I talked I talked about my I'm not trying to be a homer like Tyson, you know what I'm saying? But my guy, Michael Pittman, let me tell you. <laughs> he's not a number that one. Guy Joe, listen, Joe, Joe. That he's not. Joe, you know, no, okay, listen, you said, Joe, listen, you said Mims. You said Mims, right? Hold on. Let, let, okay. me, let me finish, Tyrone. He's not a number one. I'm not saying all these guys are like breakout number ones, but what I am saying is that if you address the offensive line and you get yourself a, a, you know, a, a, a solid number two, then guess what? Like you just said as well, I'm looking at you, and I'm saying, hey, we ain't going to fix everything in one year. We're not going to do that. So why can't we just get the number one next year then? Because if you okay, don't Joker. get Sam Block, okay. hold on, if you don't get Sam Block this year, he can end up not even mm-hmm. finishing this season. We saw him get whacked around last year when we were thinking there was hits he took last year where we came on the show and literally said nobody thought he was going to get up after that. I'm talking game after game. There were shots. We was like, we were surprised he was even standing. You can't keep doing that. You can't do so that. Getting Trent, getting Trent Williams wouldn't help that. See, this is the whole problem with our whole yeah. problem with us right now. But that's Listen, not, this, this that's my not whole this, this, well, this is my whole point, though, Joe. Listen, you want everyone saying, "Well, we'll get a receiver in the second and third round." That's all we ever do is get somebody second best. You know what I'm saying? Why not give him a number one receiver right now at pick eleven? Because the best because two tackles don't are going off the board. Hold on, because the best two tackles are going to be going off the board. You then you want to draft the right tackle to make him play left tackle when he's never done that. This is the guy you want to start in the NFL on opening day versus uh, all pro, all, 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 all team defensive event or outside linebacker. This is the guy, but you want to protect Sam. It makes no logical sense. You don't know what he's going to do. You still, got Peters. you still can save with Trent mm-hmm. Williams, but you don't want to get him a receiver, though, Joe. And so he can have all the time in what? the world because these guys can't get separation. These guys can't get open. So who the hell is he going to throw the ball to? You know what I'm saying? Who, Listen, what? We don't, it's, 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 it's not like we have a coach that's scheming guys open, Joe. We don't have that. So we have to have a guy that, you know what, like the fans will say, create his own shot. We need a guy that can create his own open open lane. This is the whole point, man. Like, this, this, this Tyrone, is getting redundant. Talking. Go ahead, Tyrone, bro. you I tell me everything I already know. Yeah, you telling me everything I already know. But first off, I never said I didn't want to get Sam wide receivers. I do. I definitely do. But I understand that but there's you want more the needed left tackle. No, no, I don't want the bottom. You're not. You're acting like you're acting like if you get 
you know, whoever is third on the board, that you're getting the worst tackle in the game. You're not. You're still getting good talent. You're still getting guys that you can plug into that spot and play. Like, stop acting like if we get the third tackle, it's like we're getting the tackle in the third round. That's not the same. Go these guys are good. That's why they're the top four tackles. They're good players. They can come in and play solidly. I understand that there's a needed wide receiver. I've talked about that for forever, okay? I get that. But I understand that there's a greater need at left tackle, and it's because I've watched this entire season. As a matter of fact, I've been watching this entire five years of guys screaming off the edge at whoever we have playing at quarterback, even before Sam, and destroying them. We've got to you shore that up. Of a joke. And I un- you, you, you complain this, Tyrone. You, you argue you every year about that I have a receiver. You're, you're right, but guess what? If you don't have somebody to block, that receiver won't work. There'll be nothing for him to catch because the ball won't be coming his way because Sam will be running for his life like he was this year. If you do so not sure draft. left tackle, your wide receiver is obsolete. You don't have to worry about him because there's a guy screaming down on Sam. You must shore that up. I get that there's a need, all, but there's a greater need I, at left tackle. Okay, one more thing, Joe. One more thing I want to say. So okay, out of all, so, look, this, this, this is kind of fun. So out of all, all seven picks we got in the draft, we need to take all offensive linemen to sort it up. That's what, just what I'm trying to say, Joe. Listen, I understand where you're coming That's from. That's not what I'm saying. Sam as well. But I know it was a joke, Joe. But listen, I know what you're saying. Oh, okay, listen, okay. I'll, I understand. I'll, 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 I understand that, Joe. Listen, I, all I want to say is this, man. I like Chucks, too, but Jay's look better on my feet. I'm just saying, man, I don't want to take nobody's second best receiver. Or, or yeah, these man. guys are telling Don't get me wrong. Why not give this dude something great? Now, we don't know how the boys are going to play out. We don't even know what Max going to do. What if Matt trades the Trent Williams next week, Joe? You know what I'm saying? Or what if he signs peace? Okay. It's, a, lot, a lot of moving pieces can happen. So we, don't, we can't foresee yeah. the future. But what I'm telling you is this. I don't want to take, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, any, uh, take a tackle that's never played left tackle in in. in in college, that makes no that makes no logical sense to me. And I expect this kid to start and be productive. No, the receiver take one, any one of those three will be better than what we've ever had, Joe. We listen. We listen. listen who's the best? Hold on, one, one, one last thing, Joe. Who is the best receiver Sam has had in three years? <laughs> name him. I'll wait, please. Uh, I don't Th- know. Listen, name him. Look, look, name somebody look, that scares listen. you, Joe. Like, oh my God, we're gonna play for this guy. Who? I, and I've, I've said that, Tyrone, and, and I hear what you're saying. Look, I, I get it. The, we've talked about trade for Trent Williams. I was one of the first guys to bring that up on the show. But up until this point, it has not happened. So we're working with what we have right now. That's why we're talking about this in the moment. If he trades for Trent Williams, of course I don't want to take a tackle in the first round because the left tackle position will be shored up. I've talked about that. I've talked about that okay, one more in thing, my – way, way, Hold on, let me finish. I've talked about that. My free agency plan is trading and signing Trent Williams. But guess what? If he does not do that, you have to address that spot. Because if you don't, you're dead. You're dead. And that's going to be the thing. end of it. One more thing. Point blank period. One more thing, Joe. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. What, go ahead. What, what, what if, Joe, what, just look at the scenario. What if three tackles mm-hmm. go in the first ten picks, Joe? Then what do you do, Joe? Because that, that's very what possible three, that could happen. Yeah, but what three tackles are gone off the board? Okay, um, the, 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 Trent, the Trent dude, the dude, the big dude, um, from what's oh. it, Louisville, where's from? The Beecham, whatever, I don't know what his name is, the, the big dude, mm-hmm. the massive dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the top three. Makai, 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 Okay, Makai, 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 yeah, okay, yes, that's it. Okay. Okay, say all, say all three top tackles are going off the board, Joe, right? What okay. do you do then? I'm drafting Andrew what do you do then? You, you, if if set if, okay. if will if you're talking about Willis, Worth, and Beckham being off the board, I'll take Andrew Thomas. No, so you would. Oh, taking a receiver? Yes, I would. Yes, wow. I would. Tyrone, I, I, I mean, listen. Let me tell. Uh, listen, you're talking to Miss Mr. Jerry Judy. Okay, I was screaming for that guy. That's one of the reasons I was talking about trading Jamal Adams. What did I tell y'all? I want to supercharge the offense. I want to draft two wide receivers. Isn't that what I told you? That's what I've been getting screamed about all week. I've been telling you I want a wide receiver, right? Yes, that's what I said. Yes. Two. But guess what? I don't want Let me two, tell you. Joe. I want three. I, uh, no, no. I, 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 and I hear you. Yeah, we right there. But we ain't got a left tackle, dog. We ain't got a left tackle. You were talking about, okay, oh, well, I, I love Jay. I love Con- Hold on. You said I love Converse, but Jay's feel good. Well, you won't have to worry about any of those shoes on. You'll be barefoot without a left tackle. How do you feel about <laughs> okay, that? Okay, one more thing. 
Okay. Yeah, one more thing, Joe. Okay, I was saying, I was, no, no, no. This, I, I agree with you, but I'm saying this. This is my whole point. I, my, I was trying to make. We're gonna argue with this till the draft in another week or so. Anyway, so it's just gonna oh, keep sure. going. But what I, <laughs> but what I want to say is this, man. Like we all want the same thing, but I think that seriously, man, honestly, we can. We need to. We need to draft at least two or three receivers. Get Sam. Yeah. A lot of weapons. So, as somebody said, you said Mims earlier, right? You know why Mims is going up the board? Because he tested good at the combine. And let me tell you something else about the combine, right? These guys test real good, they'll suck. Remember Vernon Goldstein? He blew the combine numbers up, but he sucked as a player. Listen, the tape don't lie. If you're good on tape, that's good enough for me. You know what I'm saying? Like the dude from um, Rag- 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 the Ragon. Uh, the the receiver. They won't say he's gonna drop because he ran a four with a four four five six or four six one or whatever he ran. He's gonna drop. The kid's been nothing but electric. So I hope I hope that happens and we get players like that. But I'm just saying I don't I don't believe just because a guy tested really well is gonna make him a good player. If he shows well on tape, Judy Lamb. You know what I'm saying? Well, these guys have shown every single week against the best competition in college that they can hold it on against anybody on any level. Why wouldn't you want to give Sam somebody like that that can always be open? Robbie that can't run a slant route. Robbie that can't run a comeback. You want to, you know what I'm saying? Robbie that got better in three years and learned how to run a slant in a post. Get out of here with that, bro. He hasn't had any receivers. This is why you can't get better. It ain't like we have an offensive of mind coach like Andy Reid that can, that can get the slowest guy on the team open. No, we don't have that. We have Adam Gaines, you know what I'm saying, which means, brother, if you get open, throw it to him, Sam. Best you can get. The man had an offense, Joe, where he let a defensive player come in and don't, don't put nobody on him, Joe. He just said, you know what, you duck this guy, spin off him, and then run. Come on, bro. It's retarded. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, I understand you want to build a lineup, but we also got to give Sam weapons, too. That's the problem. We lack offensive weapons in every category, upgrade on every level. Tyrone, thanks for calling it, man. We appreciate it. Hey, hey Tyson, one more thing, man. Hey, Steven. Hey, Stevie. Oh, man, come on, man. But be nice to be nice, Steve. Nice, 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 nice. You better use come on, man. respect on my name, Steve. Hey, good day. Come on, man. Uh, we're come gonna, on, man. We're going to go to Sean in New Jersey. Sean, what's up, man? <laughs> Hey, what's up, man? How y'all doing? You just survived chaos, man. This this last hour of this show has been complete chaos. So it's just nuts, man. <laughs> I know it's been really comical, so, but I, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. So, what what are your thoughts on the draft, man? What do you is there a play that you're looking for at eleven? I mean, if we don't get an offensive tackle, I want CD Lamb. But I think uh, Joe is hungry for draft picks, so I think he's trying to look with that whole trade up with Atlanta. Or Dallas, I wouldn't mind giving up Jamal Adams. I know that's a big well, thing, but we need draft picks. Well, we need, yeah, well, there's a couple of things here. So if you're looking, so is there a certain offensive tackle you want? Like if three of them are gone and then you go wide receiver, or do you just want to go wide receiver? Like how do you, like, uh, what is your, like, your ranking now, I'll take players? I, I like uh, Andrew Thomas, and I like old boy from uh, uh, Alabama, too. Okay, so you'd, you'd rather go offensive line first and those guys are gone, then you go receiver? Yeah, I'll go to receiver, but if we can, uh, I will go to receiver in the first round. I mean, I'll go offensive lineman in the first round, but if we can't get that, I'll go with a wide receiver in the first round. I would take CeeDee Lamb. And, but then again, I like, so I, if, like uh, I, I really do like CeeDee Lamb. So would you, you would take CeeDee Lamb over Lake Judy? I mean, Judy doesn't fit the... Ah, he doesn't fit our our system. With uh, I don't think he fits our system. You know, mm-hmm. he's a good route runner, but uh, with our coach, he doesn't really. Uh, I'm not too fond of him. Uh, yeah, and I, I want to thank you for calling in, man. Do you think that taking rugs at eleven is a reach? Because I know some people. Yeah, are man, I would take rugs. I would take I would take CD Lamb, but if we don't get CD Lamb, I would take rugs before I take uh, um any of the other ones, because he's like uh, Tyreek. Hmm. And, and I heard you talking about the possibility of us trading down. I know some fans, you know, I've gone back and forth to certain people about that. What kind of package would entice you, man? Like, what is the minimum effort, uh, minimum uh, capital you would take to move down, you know, to that Falcons pick? Uh, uh, that's rough. Because what are they at, 16, I believe? They're at 16, right? Yeah, I would take a, I would take a, I would take a, a second and a and a fourth. 
or a second and a third. So you would you would take a second and a third, or a second and a fourth, and you know for sure that you're going to miss out on Jerry Judy, Ruggs, and C.D. Lamb. You know they're going to be gone for sure. You know your tackle is going to be gone for sure, and that's what you would take to move down to 16 to miss on all those guys and you know continue to build. Well, we. That's the thing. I, that's a that's a position. I mean, we need draft picks, man. We don't got no wide receivers. We don't got nobody. We need all the help we need. I, I personally think that uh, we could take the the dude out of Notre Dame too. He's uh, I think he's like uh, he ran a four four. Clay uh, Chase uh, Claypool, Claypool out of Notre Dame yep. too. I like him. I like him. He's pretty. He's he's pretty big, and he ran a four four. So everybody was expecting him to run like a four six, but he ended up running like a four four. So I would I would end up getting him. So your your number one priority. So you're looking to get more draft picks. So you would trade back, and and you mentioned you would try to you would consider trading Jamal Adams too, right? Yeah, I would I would trade even though it you know he's a celebrity out here to Jets fans, but we need draft picks, man. We we can't just hold on to one player forever. One player don't make the football team. And and it, we need help on offense. It's about offense. It's not about the defense right now. Because our coach Williams, he did a great job last year, but our offense needs help. And Gase, Gase needs so all the help be, he needs. Because we... what now? What would you? What would be the minimum package you would take for Jamal Adams? Like, what would the least you would take? Nothing less than two two first round picks. I need two first round picks for him. So a first this year and a and a first next year, and maybe like a. A third. Yeah, that seems to be what everybody kind of wants. Now, what is your level of confidence with this front office? This is Joe Douglas's first draft. This whole new front office, they had a year I'm, to kind of get their evaluations together and stuff. Are you confident? I'm appreciating it. Yeah, I'm, I'm appreciating it right now. Like, honestly, I appreciate it because with the whole one-year thing, I didn't get it. You know, I was kind of like, what is he doing? But then again, it's like, think about how everybody was getting hurt. And nobody's really trusting anybody. Like, how would you feel if somebody gave you a prove it deal? It's gonna make you want to work harder. So with Jordan Jenkins, it's like it's basically like, oh, they don't believe in Jordan Jenkins. So with that being said, he signed the one year deal. He gets to prove it. Now he can end up being on the market again. Maybe we'll take him back. But like Joe Douglas said, maybe he, we can uh, we can uh, pay them in the year, in the middle of the year. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with how they handled this free agency period. I know I think we're going to have the a lot of these same questions next year, just with a lot more cap space. But we'll talk about that next year. The one thing that everybody keeps talking about, and it's funny because everybody's like, "Well, you know, what's going to fit like Adam Gase's offense?" Sean, tell me, what is Adam Gase's offense? Like, what is our system that we're trying to get players into? <laughs> Pass. 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 Pass and, and all he wants to do is run screens. It's too predictable, man. I could be, I could watch. I, I was watching last year, sitting back watching. Oh, he's about to throw a screen. It's too predictable, man. It was, it was garbage to a point. What are you going to throw a screen pass to? You're going to throw a screen pass to who? Who are you going to throw it to? This year, it's going to be too many slants through the middle. I already know what Crowder. If we don't get a wide receiver, it's going to Crowder through the middle all the time. And with this line, I don't know. I mean, set. He still got a lot to prove. I can't really say too much about this line. I feel like it's better than last year's line, but at the same time, like, you know, like I can't really talk because I never really watched those other linemen. So, I mean, I just got to see this year, but, you know, at least it's somewhat of an upgrade. I just hope that, you know, I'm just tired of uh, Joe getting all these, like, no-name players. Like, we don't need these little no-name players. We need players like Conklin. We should have paid Conklin. We should have paid up. Like, he's, you know what I'm saying? But... What he's saying right now is, like, everybody's going to be more available. There's going to be better players more available next year. So, I don't know. And I don't see us really winning nothing this year. No, I agree. I I wouldn't worry too much. This This year's about the draft. (laughs) Dude, I I completely agree with you. I think this is the year. Good. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. All you guys, good. Uh, this year's about the draft, like, to be honest. I don't see us really doing anything. We're not beating the Chiefs. I don't see that. And with the Cardinals, the Cardinals are about, I don't know what the Cardinals are. The Cardinals are stacked right now. They got wide receivers up the ass right now. So, I don't know. I don't see us beating the Cardinals either. Um, we got every, I don't even know. We didn't even beat no hard teams last year, really. I can't believe we lost to Miami. I can't believe we lost. You know, we barely won against the Bills. Like, it's it's just. Sean, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate it. Good call. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, John, it was funny because we've been saying, and Yankee John pointed out, so if you're not following Yankee John on Twitter, make sure you're following him. He's hysterical throughout the show. And we hear, even Tyrone mentioned it, where it was like, oh, well, Adam Gase's offense and the system and the system. It's like, what the hell is Adam Gase's offense? Do we even know what that is, Joe? Like, what is his system? Man, I don't, I, I, I don't know what it is. To be honest with you, I have no clue. First of all, I want to thank the last caller for calling in. He was great. I, I don't know what the system is. Um, unbalanced? <laughs> I guess that's about as all I can say. An unbalanced system? Uh, pass happy? Uh, you know, the last caller called it, you know. I, I saw screens last year that he literally used to run with the Broncos. And I was calling them out when he was running them. Because I, I remember. <laughs> I remember a lot of those screen plays. But, you know, I don't know, man. we just got to do whatever we can do to give Sam a fighting chance. We've got to surround him with something. Joe, I would be 10 beers in in the upper level and I was calling plays out. I'm like, wait, I know this play. <laughs> <laughs> How is this possible? It was crazy. It was crazy. There were screen plays. I literally was like, dude, this is a screen. I remember seeing this. It was, it was, it's insane. He's, man, it is what it is. We're, 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 we're stuck with him. So we've got to do whatever we can to build the team. We're going to go to John in New Jersey. What's up, John? Hey, what's going on? Long-time listener, first-time caller. You guys are great. Welcome. Oh, well, thank you, man. We're, it's a lot of chaos tonight, man. A lot of arguments about a lot of positions. <laughs> and this is just cha- it's yep. just chaos, really. But uh, and what, what are your thoughts on shout the draft, man? To, uh, shout out to Prime Time because I thought he was I thought he was you, Tyson, because <laughs> it was my first time calling <laughs> in. He's like, no, it's Kevin. I was, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> 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 no worries, man. No worries at all. What are you? What are your thoughts on this draft class, man? Who are you looking to get? Uh, I, I mean, I, Tyrone was wilding out, uh, and I understand him and all that because we just want to see weapons. Because we ain't had. Well, I'm a long time Jets fan, so I'm 37. I've liked my since I've been 10 years old. So I, I suffered through everything, and uh, I, I'm, I'm only staying positive. And it's like I, I want the wide receiver and the weapon too. But we're just not really in position to take a player like that. Like, that would be if, uh, you know, we had a steady offensive line and uh, and then we wanted to bring in uh, that extra weapon to get over that extra hump. But but the way it's looking now, I mean, like, I agree with what you guys are saying. You can't really say this offensive line is better because it's all, it's all just blue-collar working Joe guys. You know what I mean? I mean, Connor McGovern to step up, but... Connor McGovern's not even, we're, we're making it like we're bringing in, uh, you know, uh, what's his name on the Eagles, uh, their center. Like, I mean, we, we brought in Connor McGovern, that's good, I'm not I'm not hating on it, but uh, I, I think you got to go offensive line, and I, I think even Josh Jones at 11 would be a, a slight reach, because he's not in the top four, but he only has, yeah. uh, he allowed like 18 pressures against like 1,400 snaps or something like that it was, yeah. So, so he wouldn't even be there. You're still getting what we need over what we want. Because I, I want yeah. the CD land. I want Jerry Judy. That's who I want. Because I figure yeah. even in Adam Gase's system, Jerry Judy would have to get open for Darnold to get him the ball. Like, <laughs> that's who I wanted. Yeah. But, but I, yeah. I think you got to go offensive line. Yeah, and, and I want to thank you for calling in, man. I also want to thank you for listening as well. Love when people, you know, listen and, and definitely chime in and call in. So, again, thank you. But, look, I hear you. I'm right there with you. I understand people want weapons. I want weapons like no tomorrow. But, man, it will, what we're working with right now, you got to look at it and you got to say, hey, you got to upgrade this offensive line. And so you got to get a tackle in here. That's, that's going to be my question absolutely, for you. Is, absolutely. You're sitting at 11. You got weapons. Yeah, you're sitting at a, yeah, I hear you. You're sitting at 11. Who's the tackle you want? Like, who, who's the top tackle that you think could be there at 11 that you covet? I mean, I know they're saying, like, like he was the talk, like, uh, like last season and all that, Andrew Thomas, and I feel like everybody's hating on him now, but I feel like if Andrew Thomas came in, like, I'd be real happy with that because I think he's the most day one ready. Everybody's saying, uh, what's his name out of Louisville, Makai Becton, and he's big and all. But he he's he's all, he's not even twenty one years old. Look at what we just did with Clinton Williams. Like he's young and he's gonna be the next Aaron Donald and all that. And he came in and it was like, you know, it, it, he wasn't what we expected. He underperformed big time. And and I I don't think we need a big mauling guy. I think we we need a guy that's smart 
And that, that I, I would take Thomas. That's who I would take. Or or the guy who played uh, uh, to his blind side. Because uh, I think he could flip-flop over to the left tackle easily because he was a good pass blocker. Uh, Judge Eric Wills, right, I think is his name. Yep. Now what, now, what are your expectations for this draft class? Are you expecting to try to get, like, three or four contributors? Or is, that, is that too much, or is that realistic? Like, what are your, what are your expectations out of this draft? You know, like, uh, I, I know we'll get a good player at 11 regardless, because um, I, I feel confident in that. It's just that we're picking so late in the second round, we might have to reach to get a player that I think will produce, and then, and then I think we'll get a... a production out of the player with the third round pick we got from the Giants, and, th- and then I think after that, it's just a crapshoot. I think if you think you can really get more than, like, two or three players out of a draft, you can't expect all these guys to come in and be the all-stars right from college, you know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a transition and a learning process, and the speed of the game is so much faster. So it's like, you definitely want to get that tackle at 11 for that reason alone, because at, le- at least those guys coming in they're younger, faster, stronger, and, and so are all these edge rushers that were tearing Sam apart last last year. Now, you mentioned we had that later pick in the second round, which is true. Would you consider trading one of our third-round picks to move up in the second round? The only the only way I would do that, I, I would pair that, that second-round pick and the late third-round pick, which I don't really want to, but if he's there, I would go in back into the first round to get Mims. Because I think Mims is a first-round wide receiver. I think it's just so heavy this year. Everybody's kind of dis- he he performed and and his his numbers are good and he's a big body dude, which is what we need in the red zone. I think and and we got two good tight ends. And then if you brought in that tackle, you know, and then you can let him grow. But at least we we get a first-round caliber wide receiver, even if it's a later round. I mean, I'd love for like Justin Jefferson to be there, but I just don't think that that's going to happen. Now, if you if you get that wide receiver and you get the left tackle, what is your level of confidence in Adam Gase using all these parts to put together a, a solid offense uh, this year? That's a sore <laughs> subject with me. <laughs> I, 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 never, I never went to any games my whole life. So so I saved up and, and we got Bell. And I was so excited to get Bell. And, uh, and I got season tickets. And, and after the Patriots game, I just ended up, I didn't even sell the tickets because I didn't want to give them away. I was so mad uh, just with just the whole injuries, the mono, Gase's system. So I went and bought a TV and watched it for a moment. I couldn't take it no more. I'm like, I'm just not going to do it. So I don't. I, I had comp- some confidence that Gase would be confident with the weapons that he had. But, I mean, like, uh, like you guys are always saying, he didn't even use, like, split sets with, like, Montgomery and Bell, or, or, or use Bell as a wide receiver when we were hurting on, on receiver. It, 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 you know, it's just, I, I don't understand his, uh, I don't, like you said, there's really no system or, or like, there's nothing like, like a sneaky play or any kind of trickery. It's just kind of like, like, uh, like that last season with, with Todd Bowles with the bubble screen. It's like, oh, here comes another bubble screen. Here comes another, like, oh, my God. You know, I want to get in shorts on my TV so I can break in and get another one. Like, it'll drive me nuts. And it's like, it's like if we see it coming, and like you said, Tyson, 10 beers deep watching the game, it's like the other team's just licking their chops. Like, and Sam's probably just praying he don't get hurt. Like, <laughs> like oh, we're calling another bubble screen. Like, I mean, it's terrible. It was so terrible last year. It really, and I'm always like the super positive Jets fan, like around me and my friends. They're all. You know, a lot of them are older, and they're all, like, negative. And, and I'm just like, now, now man, I, I, they, like, put me over the hill this year. I'm like, you know, I, 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 I'm just seeing it for what it is. Like, I just think there's a lot of questions on this team. And I didn't think we'd be in this position this year. But it kind of lined up to that with the whole way we let uh, Max spend the money and then, and then Douglas yep. came in. It's kind of like you set him up with this whole mess, and now it's like, as Jets fans, it's like, all right, fix it in a year, or, or we're going to yeah. fix it in this draft. But, but it's not even possible. Like, if you look at these other teams nope. and the way they do it, they, they do it over years. 
and they might have an up and down year in between. But but like you guys said, you know, you're always saying about the depth on the team. You need that depth. So when we have injuries like we did this year, I mean, I mean, it was terrible. Falks in there. I don't, was that his name, Luke Falk? I, I didn't even know who I was yep. watching, and he terrible. didn't even, like, throw the ball. I'm like, it was so terrible. It was, I was yep. really hurt this year as a Jets fan, big time. Dude, this is a fallback, man. This is a fallback, man. Oh, man, it was brutal. And then it's like, now we're just like, all right, we're going to trade Le'Veon Bell next year and all that. And I'm like, all right, well, then let's tear it down. I got, I got a draft scenario for you guys. It would never happen. But I want to see what your, your your take is on it, what you would think about it. So we got 11 overall. Uh, we're saying about trading with Atlanta. Atlanta needs a defensive tackle. So we give them Clinton Williams. We take the $9 million hit. We get a third-round pick also with their 16-round pick for Clinton Williams. And then we trade Jamal to the Cowboys for their first-round pick this year, a third this year, and a third next year. What do you think about that? You're really, in that order, you're really blowing it up. <laughs> you, would, you, you would take well. Here you go. You take Thomas. You take uh, you take Thomas. You take Justin Jefferson, and you take uh, Clavon Chason, the the pass rusher. So then you fill three needs, and you got C.J. Mosley as the leader on the team. I know you're losing Jamal, but at this point, it's like I mean, I mean, you're losing one to gain possibly two, three players. I think. <laughs> I wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. I know I'm tearing it down, but and it wouldn't happen. But Joe, what do you think? I mean, yo, he's tearing it apart, man. I just, I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I, I just, I, I don't. It, to me, I understand why people are frustrated with Quentin Williams, but you know, I don't know if you would just be like kind of cut bait on the kid because I mean. Wouldn't you guys want to at least see what he can give you? If he's if he's what again, I understand the frustration, but you gotta. He, it was his rookie year. It was his rookie right, year. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that that's why. I, even then, I don't I don't know if the Falcons would even give up that pick for him because again, I think the Falcons are truly targeting a wide receiver. So I, I don't even think they would take Quinn because I think they're trying to get offense in there and they have their eyes set on on one of these big wide receivers uh, that are in the first round. Right, right, right. I'm kind of hoping maybe uh, Greg Williams did bring Aaron Dar- Darnold up. Uh, he, he uh, Aaron Donald, uh, when he was with the Rams. So I'm hoping maybe we could get a little out of him like that. It's just, uh, I just thought he'd be so much stronger. And he looked like so unstoppable in college. And then it was like, he just couldn't get any penetration. It, 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 he just looked weak out there. I don't know if he was playing hurt. Like, if you remember well, when Muhammad Wilkerson played her, like, yeah, he yeah. just didn't look himself or what I thought he would be, I guess. Well, well, and, and, you know, look, and, and I get that. And I think, that, again, that was one of my frustrations with Mike McCagney, and that's why I kept screaming that we need to draft, draft Josh Allen. I oh, I yeah. Him, I, I, yeah, I believe, I believe he's going to be a good player. I believe he's going to be all right. But I don't think he's ever going to be what we need because we need a pass rusher. That's what we needed, and we ended up drafting him because Mac would go BPA. It's the same thing with like Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams was an okay player, but he was never what we needed. He wasn't not horrible, a pass rusher. exactly, but he's not a pass rusher. So it's like right. you, you didn't hit the spot. You didn't do what we needed to do. So, but and, and I understand that's, that fans are frustrated because of that. They expect him to get all these sacks, but that's I don't think that's ever right. what he's going to be. He's not going to be a. Uh, a 13, 14 sack a year guy. I don't think that Quentin Williams is ever going to do right. that because that's just not what he is. Can I make a quick point with Jamal Adams on that? Like, Jamal Adams demanding this money, I think it's kind of crazy because he's demanding that because we have to use him as, like, an in-the-box safety and all that. But it's not like, uh, like I think Ed Reed or something in his, in his first three years got, like, 23 interceptions. You know what I'm saying? From the safe, strong safety position. And I think because yeah. we have to use Jamal in so many other positions because we lack an edge ruster that he feels like he could demand that kind of money. But to pay that kind of money for a safety, even though it is Jamal, I love Jamal, I got two Jamal Adams jerseys, like, but he's just, it's not worth it because I'd rather go out and get, 
a, a, a pass rusher that could get me the six and a half sacks that he got and get a safety that would get me one or two interceptions like he got. It's not like he's lighting it up from his position. It's because we're so weak at so many positions that it's like, now what, we're just going to pay him and put, our, put ourselves in a bad position and that, that we can yeah, never build other, yeah, but, another position? Yeah, but the other argument, though, is that you could take the, the, the counterpart to that is He's doing so much playing so many different roles. If you got the parts that we need, he can be much better at the role he's supposed to play. That could be the argument. Right. Like but, he could be actually where he's, you, you know, mean, that's. I think when we had bowls, you kind of seen him play the strong safety position a little more. Like in that Dallas game, he made that, I was at that game, he made that, that game safe and sack, right? But it was like, I think it was the play before, two plays before, he was the one that got the pass interference penalty that put us in that position, that drove Dallas down the field to put us in that position. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he was that good, he wouldn't make those those uh, mistakes from, from that position. Or I remember, uh, you know, it was Gronkowski and stuff, and he's, like, all fired up about covering Gronkowski, but, but uh, we were giving up, you know, a lot of... Uh, he was, he's, I don't think he's a really good coverage safety, strong safety. I think he's a more yeah, he's, just, go ahead. No, no, I think, no, listen, I think he's a versatile player. He, he's good at certain things, bad at other things. He's still a young player. He's still a lot learning, learning a lot of things. But to me, it's like yeah. if you're going to trade Jamal, if you're going to trade him, then I would trade Le'Veon Bell. I would trade Quayle. I would just, if you're going to go full, if you're going to go all about draft picks, I trade everybody then. I wipe everybody out. I get everything out. Give me a You don't have to say, do you know that. What? This, why not? You don't have to do that. Yeah, because you don't have to do that. You don't have to blow up the team because you're trading wow. Jamal Adams. That's not like that. You don't that that that's nonsensical. If you trade Jamal Adams, it allows you again more picks to continue to build the defense up. I understand that Jamal is used. He's versatile and he can be used in all these different ways. I get it. He had what six sacks this year. But if you got a real pass rusher, we wouldn't be having to right. do all that stuff. And six, or, by the way, six sacks for a pass rusher is not a lot. A Lawrence no, for a got a ton is. of money. Got, for, for a safety, safety it is. But again, for a safety. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're talking about, yeah, yeah absolutely. but we are talking about for a pass rusher because that's what everybody keeps saying. Well, he's the best pass rusher we have on the team because we don't have one. So when you're talking right. about a pass rusher, if a pass rusher only got six sacks, people would be like, that's not good enough. So listen, I right. think he's a great safety. He's a great safety. I think he's extremely talented, and he is versatile. We can use him in different ways. But he's, it's, we need more. We need corners. We need a pass rusher. We need other stuff. And again, if you lose him, you can put man in that position. I get it. I love Adams, but we cannot pay him the money that he's going to be asking for. He wants to be the highest. He wants to be the highest paid player in franchise history. He said that. We we also right. talked about how uh, the m- type of money he wants. He's been on Twitter talking about the type of money he wants. He said he will not leave a dollar on the table. He's not going to give us and a hometown that- discount. There hasn't been a player, I don't think, in the last, hell, I can't remember a player in the last 20, 30 years that has given us a hometown discount that has been as good as him. We're going to have to pay off right. our nose to keep him. And we, we're not in that position. We have too many needs, far too many. I love him. I'll put it, we gotta, we I'll put it like this. Like, I think Jamal's great, and I would not want to lose Jamal, but I just yeah. don't think we're in position to keep a player like Jamal with all that we need if we want to be competitive in the next two years. I think you've got to give some thing. up to get some. Exactly, and the thing is, again, he had an all-pro year. He had, like you said, six sacks this year. It's a lot for our safety. We went 7-9. We were 0-7 at one point. He got those sacks. He got those in, I believe it's like a three-game cluster when he got those. Because we played the Dolphins, and I think, he had, I think he had some sacks against the Dolphins. He had some sacks against Washington. And I think he had some sacks against the Bears. I don't understand how the team record reflects when Sam Donald didn't play. No, let me break it down. Break it down. When Luke Falk played, when Luke Falk played, those, those games they lost were Jamal Adams' fault. No, those, those no. games are not Jamal Adams in or Jamal Adams' fault. What we're telling you No, you just said the Jets went 7-9 that, with Jamal Adams. The Jets went 7-9 with Luke Falk also playing quarterback. That's a big part of their losing. Yeah. Well, ja- no, Jamal Adams. We, we really Sam should Donald have went like 4-12. <laughs> yeah, but 
Yeah, but Sam Darnold was out there week one. We lost that game. Even when Sam came back, we still struggled. We were losing games, even when he was playing. <laughs> so we were, we're not saying it's his fault. I'm not saying that 7-9 is his fault. What I'm saying is that this team is bad. You just said, they went, you just said they went 7-9 with Jamal Adams. Well, they went 7-9 yes, with they the quarterback that was out to do that, That's what I'm, what I'm telling you is that as great as he is, when I say he's going 7-9 with Jamal Adams, as great as he is, we still went 7-9. It's not his fault that we're this bad because he wasn't the guy doing the drafting. He's not our general manager. But guess what? To get better, we need more picks. And he's one of the guys right. that we can move because he still has a relative. He's still on his rookie year deal. He's one of the guys we can move, get capital, and continue to build his football team with. That's one of the reasons why they were looking to move him. Uh, again, Le'Veon Bell's probably going to be gone next year anyway. Gaze doesn't use him anyway. But to talk about, well, we just got to blow the team up because we trained Jamal Adams, that makes no sense. We don't have to blow the team up. We can continue to build the football team. Because if you're blowing the team up because we're training Jamal Adams this year, then what the hell are you doing with Sam Darnold? Right. You've literally wasted his entire rookie year deal. Well, if you're talking about that, you, that's nonsensical. That you, is you, nonsensical. You can't have a, a, team you can't have a Ferrari and, and, and it's live not, in a see, it's, not, it's, like, it's not, it's <laughs> not, not really physical. nonsensical. You look at, if you look at, it's not nonsensical if you look at the big picture. If I get a chance to talk for one second, just one second, that's all I'm asking for. If you're trading Jamal Adams this year, Jamal Adams is arguably your best player. You, all, you can get all the draft picks you want. You're already saying you're not going to win the division this year. You're not going to be competitive this year. You're already saying that. So if you're going to do that, and you know, we know Le'Veon Bell's not going to be here next year, Henry Anderson's not going to be here next year, we already know this. So if we know this, and it's about rebuilding for next year, and you have $100 million of space, trading them makes a lot of sense. Because you know you're not going to be there. No, it doesn't. And you know they're not... Yes, it does. They're not going to be your next year anyway. Are. So if you're, if you're, okay, if you're so training with your best player, so get all the draft picks you can now, get those young players this year, so next year when you have $100 million in cap space, you're, you're expediting your rebuilding process. The Jets all have to be a winning yeah. team this year anyway. But, They're just not going yeah, But don't you think, don't you think Joe, Joe Douglas said that by not, not picking up Conklin in free agency? That's how I took that. I think we could have got Conklin. Instead, we got George Fant. So he kind of like... Yeah. He, he, he kind of, like, told the fan base, basically, like, like I'm going to budget shop this year and I'm going to build through the draft, and that's going to take some time because I got a six-year contract. And then I think he yeah, did the yeah, one-year yeah. contract because he's not confident in the game. Yeah. And let me, let me, let me um, answer your question and why I think it's nonsensical is because if you trade Jamal Adams, that doesn't mean you're not going to be competitive this year. That's not what that means. Because if you take Jamal Adams and turn him, let's say we, again, let's say we get these two wide receivers. You get Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, and we, I don't know, take and trade for Trent Williams. That solves your offensive problems. Your offense is set. If you get four picks, yeah, you can still address, your de- you still address your defense. So you can actually go get a pass rusher. So say you get a pass rusher and he gives you, let's say, how many, how many sacks did, did Josh Allen have this year? What? I, don't, I don't remember. I remember uh, at one point he was at like 10 or 11. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he, he was around there. There was, there was. A, so, say you get two pass rushers to give you that. You don't think it will be a better team and we'll be competing because that's what we're missing. You could also get a corner as well. This is stuff that could come next year as well. You can get capital for future years. You could end up getting yourself a corner next year who can come in and be a number one corner, and you still got more picks. How right, you, how like you it sucks to give him up, but you're getting so many yeah. assets to give him exactly. up. How could you refuse the assets? Because that, what you're team, doing, there's it, just so many keyholes. Exactly, because what you're saying, and, and this, is, this is my issue with people, so that's why I said it's nonsensical, because what you guys are saying is that if we trade Jamal Adams, fold up the season, this is an offensively driven league. I've never seen a safety drag a team to a Super Bowl or playoff contention, but I've seen a, I've seen a quarterback do it. I've seen quarterbacks do it all the time. That's what I mean, like, like if our I've offense a was a 15th ranked offense, but our defense was <laughs> ranked, 18th, I exactly. think we'd have a better shot at the playoffs like that. Like Exactly. You know. I, and, and that's why I keep saying people are so attached to Jamal Adams, they're detached from Sam Darnold. If this offense was better, and look, Gay sucks, but I'm saying if the talent was there, you can have Sam at the line, make it audible, so it didn't just push Gay's out the window. Whatever you call you little right. idiot, I can get away from those plays. But if you don't give him the talent to be, at least be able to do that, this offense cannot compete. If you're telling me if we go into next year with two with C D Lamb or C D Lamb and Jerry Judy or Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs, Trent Williams, 
Connor McGovern and whoever we got at right tackle and, and Le'Veon Bell and Herndon coming back or Griffin coming back, you telling me this right. that offense isn't upgraded? You telling me we if can't compete? If it's not, then Gage should be fired. Definitely. Exactly. Gage should exactly. Be fired. And that answers the question. And the other thing, too, like you said about paying Sam Darnold, and then you got you got Jamal Adams. So if you go overboard just to keep Jamal Adams, and then now we got to pay Sam, you're really never going to be in position to put the team around Sam that we need to to get the most out of Sam. And like you said, you win with offense. You don't win with defense. You maintain with defense to keep your offense ahead because you're moving the ball. But if you can put up, you know, uh, like, uh, who am I thinking about? That puts up a lot of points. You're thinking about the Chiefs. This is is literally what you're thinking about because this is is what I'd like to mirror our team against. It's an easy plan, the Chiefs. If you look at the Chiefs and they get off the plane, they're down by 21. You have to abandon your game plan. The Chiefs offense is, our defense is not like, Mind blowing. They got some pass no. and they got some decent guy, decent guys defensively. They got some solid guys, but it's not like they're a shut down defense. Guess what? No, look you at that game against Texas. Texas put up exactly. twenty eight, and the Chiefs came right exactly. back within like right eight back. minutes. Like, and and they're never afraid of it at all. You could be up by seven, blink twice, and you're down by twenty one, and you just lost. They do it all the time. Right. We why can't we mirror yeah. that? Because that's and like what you said, you get Judy NFL. and Ruggs with Sam, that's, that's, that's a similar thing. Sam is a good quarterback. If he had the weapons and the time to throw, we wouldn't even be worried about what we got to stop with them because we would be scoring so much. We would just need to hold them from, from, from getting within a score of us. But if you're up two scores, you're not really worried about the defense holding them down because you yep. could just score so yep. many points on offense. Yeah. John, excellent comment. Thanks for calling, and we definitely appreciate it. Uh, absolutely. You guys are great. I love the show. Kevin, I'm sorry again. I'm going to try to call it again. <laughs> like I said, I truck, I truck drive, so it's been crazy with this coronavirus. Stay safe, mm-hmm. everybody. Wear the mask and gloves. Don't throw parties. I live in New Jersey, down by the shore, outside of Thomas River and Lakers, so I don't know why everybody's still doing get-togethers. But we're getting a little bit better at it. I'll, a crazy story real quick. I was in Louisiana, and they're still having crawfish boils and fishing together, and they're one of the hot spots. I couldn't believe it. It's like nobody uh, from from Alabama uh, all the way to Louisiana is taking it serious. They were laughing at me with the, with the mask and the gloves. Everybody's still just no six feet away, none of that. So, But it's a real thing, man. It's scary stuff. So I don't know why they're taking it like that, but I hope everybody takes it a little serious. Well, yeah, I'm in the Jersey team. I'm, I'm probably, I'm, I'm right near you, man. I'm in Bricktown, so I'm in the same part, man. It's definitely scary uh, times. Be safe out there, man. We, <laughs> we appreciate your call. Awesome. Be Thanks, safe, guys. Man. Have a good one. All good right, problem. you too. You too. We're going to go to, we got to go. We got somebody going to hold. Steve, what's up, man? Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? Pretty good. How you doing, man? Well, first off, most importantly, are you guys staying safe, being at home? Doing our best, and I know I am. It's just, well, you're, we're in New Jersey, man. We don't really have many options. We have no choice but to stay home. So uh, how about you? Yeah, no, everybody, it's just a crazy world right now, man. Crazy world right now. Yep, just got to stay home, be safe, wear masks, gloves, social distance, and hopefully this all ends sooner rather than later. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So what are your thoughts on the draft? The way of how I, I, I see it is, you know, everybody is all saying the thing. I mean, you know, the goal is, I think, for this draft, you know, for the first, for the very, very first round is we got to build around Sam. Now, here is the thing what I've been seeing, because I know everybody is all posting these things about the mock draft, you know. A lot of times it just doesn't happen because, you know, you know, GMs in the leagues are not going to reveal what they're going to get, but... But here's how I, I, I see this. If, if let's say, because we're at number 11, if any of those four top offensive linemen that, that are still available by the time when our turn comes up, we would have to take one of them. And, I mean, all four of them are great. But here's the thing. Once all, if all, but if all four of them are taken by the time when the wide receiver it, it, when our turn comes up, 
we would have to get one of the three wide receivers. And I got to tell you, it, 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 it would be neck and neck right now me between Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamp. Oh. Well, first off, Steve, I want to thank you for calling in, man. I, I couldn't wait to, to hear from you tonight. And I hear what you're saying. You know, I know people want weapons. They definitely want a wide receiver. I know you like the wide receivers as well. But I want to. You talked a little bit about Jerry Judy and CD Lamb. But what are your thoughts on Rugs, man? Could you see the Jets taking Rugs at eleven? If if Rugs was the only receiver left available, I would take him. He would be my third option. I mean, Rugs is the fastest receiver out of out of all of them. But Jerry Judy is a great route runner. So if if did, did, are there any receivers after the first round that you're interested in? If we have to go second or third round, guys that you're looking at? If let's say if the Jets went offensive line in the first round, which I do think it's going to be the safest bet to do before the wide receiver. If there is, I would love to get that guy from USC that's um, much as a Michael Pittman, I think, Joe, is his name. Did I say it right? Oh, yes, yes you did. Michael, Michael Pittman the USC Trojan man. Because here's the thing. like, Because let's say, if in scenario, if the Jets, let's say, didn't get offensive line in the first round, and, and let's say they got Jerry Judy, he could definitely be, you know, the future number one, you know, for Robbie. And let's just say in round number two, and if, Pitt, and if, and if Joe's boy from USC is available – he could definitely be a really good number two receiver for Sam. There you go. There's some hot takes for you, Joe. What do you think? Uh, look, you know, listen. <laughs> Steve calls in, and he knows what's up. Anytime you talk about Pittman, I'm all ears. And Steve is correct as usual. You know, people be trying to say things about him, but he's got flyer takes, and that's what he's bringing tonight. That's exact. I, I agree with what he said. Pittman, if you take him as a guy in the second round, I can see him definitely making an impact here. A big body, a guy that can definitely get open, particularly in the red zone too. That's a guy that Sam could throw a lot of footballs to. So I would, I would love to see that happen. I would absolutely love to see him brought here. I definitely think he'll get the job done here. But, Steve, I want to get your thoughts on this, man. I, I know we talked a little bit about this, but where do you rank your tackles, though? Because I know the Jets need some offensive line help. When you look at these guys, who are you looking at in the four? Who do you like the most? If I would have to pick the one who I would like to see the Jets get, at first I was going to say the guy from Louisville because of his size and of how big he is. However, though, the, the tackle I would actually take first is the guy from Alabama. I think it's Jarek Willis. Jarek Wills, yep. Jarek, or Jarek Wills, okay. That would be the guy who I would take first. Now, is there any positions that you could see the Jets going other than offensive line and wide receiver? Could they could they try corner? Could they could a pass rusher go there and we just be surprised by it? I'm going to say this right now. I would not want the Jets. The Jets can go later in the round at corner. Don't do it in the first round. Do not do it in the first round. The first round and possibly round number two is about is is all about building around Sam. So if you want to go for a cornerback or go for a pass rusher, go go in the later rounds. Okay, fair enough. And there was there was a report that the the Steelers, I think it was Kevin Colbert, was talking about trying to have rounds to the draft added this year, just due to all the uncertainty and there could be just delays and whatever else. What would you think about adding three rounds to this year's draft? Just, just, just this one, not next year, just this year alone, adding three rounds. Would you be for that or against that? I mean, I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, because I know, I know there's a lot of people that want I know a lot of players coming out of college who want to play in the NFL, want to get their chance. Honestly, I think, I think seven rounds is enough. That's just my opinion. Okay, fair. No, fair enough. No, I thought it was interesting that they were they were talking about that. That'd be pretty wild. But yeah, I mean that's mm -hmm. where Joe Douglas could get the most bang for his buck. If you have you know the the undrafted free agents, that's where you can scoop up a lot of players like a Robbie Anderson or whatever else. So, yeah. Steve, thanks for calling. Yeah, me, hey, we Tyson. So, hey, wait, Tyson. Yeah. I just got yeah. one more question to ask you. Just there's one or two more things I just got to say real quick because I know we got a lot of callers on. But I know. But here's the thing, Tyson. If the Jets let's say go wide receiver in round number one. 
Who would you pick out of those three receivers if they were available? Oh, man, I, that's a good question. I, I kind of like Judy, um, but I mean, dude, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm by far not a college football expert. So I mean, I like Judy, but I understand CD Lamb, the explosiveness, the drugs, and if you look at last year, all we talked about last year was Tariq Cohen and Tyreek Hill and how explosive they are and how versatile they are and everything yeah. else. So. I, yeah. I, I could see it, man. That's that's kind of where the game is going, to be honest with you. But it's just yeah, and, you know, and I just gotta say, dead. Joe, Joe, this is one of the funniest shows I think you have ever had in a long time. I just I just loved how you and Kevin were going back and forth. <laughs> well, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, Steve. Listen, sometimes being prime time, you know, we got to get it in. But yeah, you know, I, I love Kev. You know, great producer. We definitely go back and forth a lot off. You know, the air as well. We definitely trade trade shots back and forth, but that's my guy, man. You know what I'm saying? We just got to have things out, yeah. some things we disagree about. And listen, one thing I, I could say is this. If, let's say, if Jamal Adams' thing doesn't get done by this year, this year, you know, because we'll have a lot of cap going into next year because, you know, a lot of teams are going to get more money, you, you know, we definitely could get his, his contract hopefully by next year. I mean, that's just what I'm saying, and Joe, I understand the whole thing, you know, about what you were saying about Adams, but, you know, everyone has their own opinion, and no matter what your opinion is, Joe, I respect it 100%. Yeah, I I respect your opinion as well, Steve, and I stand for you, man. You're a good dude. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, that's it for tonight. Be safe, okay? Have a good night. Be safe, man. Thank you, Steve. We're going to go to Angelo in Arizona. Angelo, what's up, man? Hi, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my call today. Oh, thanks for calling in, man. What's on your mind? Yeah, you know, first of all, I kind of started off a little bit with uh, I really enjoy the uh, uh, the stick between uh, you, Joe, and, and, and caller Steve. Uh, good entertainment, uh, good radio, and it's really a pleasure listening to the three of you talk. Uh, it, it really is fun. Well, thanks, man. We try to have fun with this. Listen, man, this is some crazy times. We're trying to be a little distraction, so we appreciate it. Yeah, definitely good stuff. You, you know, I I wanted to start off a little bit about talking about that uh, that number eleven. You know, we we've been talking about it all month now, and uh, for the last several calls, uh, you know, people have been talking about it as well. And in my opinion, uh, from what I see. Uh, Someone like a worse from Iowa, uh, he's got a wrestling background. Uh, he's been more of a right tackle, lots of power, uh, good prospect, could move over to the guard position as well. Uh, so I think he's okay. I think he's pretty good. Uh, then you've got uh, Wills, which is more of a technician. Again, plays right tackle. Uh, sounds like he's going to be a solid prospect. Um uh, I think Beckton is uh, a boomer bust pro- uh, type of prospect. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think he's somebody that obviously plays on the left side. Uh, he has a lot of athleticism for a person that's three hundred and sixty uh, plus pounds. Um, but I, I'm not sure if he's the right fit for the Jets. Uh, the Jets want to play more of a zone um, type of, of offense, and I am not sure if he'd be the right fit. Now, Andrew Thomas, which I've been banging the table for, uh, the, you know, the yep. last four or five weeks, and, and I know, Joe, I think you have too a little bit. Yep. Uh, boy, this is a guy that reminds me a lot uh, of Ferguson uh, in, in terms of having a high football IQ, also has very long arms, that can kind of push off on that offensive uh, linebacker or the DE, uh, has plenty of power, 6'5", 320-plus pounds. Uh, it seems like he's a very clean prospect and would be wonderful in, in the clubhouse as well. Uh, so I, I think, in my opinion, um, that's who I want. I, I think he would be the right fit. He's a left tackle. He's played there for the last two years. You know, he has an option to go to Notre Dame as well. Georgia. He's a finance guy, so he's got a good head on his shoulders, and it just seems like he would be a really good 10-year prospect. You know what the floor is with him. Uh, you know, he's got a little bit of upside. Uh, he's a little bit better with the power 
I mean, they on the run game, then he has pass protection, but they can teach him that too and, and, and get his legs the right way. Yeah, yeah. And, and listen, I want to thank you for calling in. I'm telling you, I love Thomas, especially the fact that he stayed away from that awful school, okay? He stayed out of that cesspool of nastiness over there and chose Georgia. You know what I'm saying? That was a very smart decision for him. I love this kid. But I, I want to talk to you about this. You know what I'm saying? Say those tackles are gone. You got to go wide receiver at 11. How do you rank your wide receivers, and who are you taking? Yeah, so I'm not taking a wide receiver, Joe, uh, at number 11. If those four options are off the board, I'm going to go with Josh Jones. I think it's imperative. It, it's probably one of the most important picks the Justice had in, in, in many, many drafts that we shore up that left tackle. And I think Josh Jones is next in line. Boy, this guy is really athletic. He is long-armed. He's very, very good. He excels at pass protection. And you can teach him some other things as well. I think Pollock is a pretty good coach on the offensive line. I think he can help out, and he can teach this person how to play the right way. Uh, So, no, I would stay away from wide receiver because what I think the Jets can do is they can couple their second round with the third round pick that they got from the Giants, move up to the 28th pick with Baltimore, considering we have a relationship there, and I think a T. Higgins might be in play there. So you're getting a starting left tackle of Andrew Thomas at 11 if he's there, or a Josh Jones, and then you're getting your number one wide receiver and someone like a T. Higgins. That's a bold take right there. That is a bold take. That's because now you're, I mean, if you're, if you're saying all four of those guys are gone, that means you're, you're sitting at, you're looking at prime, you're looking at Judy or, or Lamb are definitely there then. You throw those four guys yeah. on, the, you're going to have the, the quarterbacks are going to be gone. That's a bold, Joe, that's a bold take right there. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, I, that's how, that's how deep, this, this is what I'm thinking, guys, and I'm usually a logical caller here with you guys, <laughs> down to earth. <laughs> but I, you know, but I, I really think that would be the option, getting getting that fifth left tackle in Josh Jones. And look, if you really, really want to get that wide receiver or someone else, you've got trading options. Atlanta Falcons have already wanted to move up and get somebody. So if you want to add some additional picks, that's fine. And guess what? Someone like a T. Higgins that you can get on the bottom of the first round, Baltimore, and I'm just throwing it out as a scenario. Hey, that's a hey, here's my question. wide receiver. But, but, but what would you consider the drop-off from, say, Andrew Thomas to Josh Jones? What do you consider the drop-off there? I, I think Thomas, that's a good question. Thomas is a starting left tackle. You can bring him in, and you're going to plug and play him. I think Josh Jones is going to need a little bit more uh, – help some more teachings in terms of how to play the position but I, I think with the Jets situation they probably would put him right into the uh, the first game of the season Tyson so what would you what would you consider the drop off between say Judy and Lamb and T Higgins I, I from what I'm reading and I'm not a, a front office person but from what I'm reading Judy is more of a technician in terms of route running I mean Yep. You can see what, what the problem Darnold had. Darnold couldn't get any of his re- receivers to be open. One, because he just didn't have time because of his offensive line. And two, because the wide receiver didn't have any separation. Well, guess what? Mm-hmm. Judy is a perfect person or perfect player that can create that separation. Uh, the other two guys, you know, you got a speedster. you got another guy that can jump up on the ball and, and get those jump balls. Is there a separation? I think Judy would be a better fit because he can create that separation and give Donald a little bit more time to, to you know, get the ball to him, where the other guy is a speedster. You know, you had that at Rob Anderson. How did that work? I, I don't know. Um, so that's my, that's my answer to you guys. Yeah, because like, I was trying to figure out, if you're looking at just, if, you know, Joe Douglas has a board and he's going he's to give everybody a value, like what your value is, to the team, what your value is as a player, or anything else, it's the drop off of you know Jones to your top four linemen, then the drop off between say Lamb and Judy and T Higgins. Like where are you getting a better value? Can you get that you know, a fifth lineman as opposed to your number one receiver? 
I mean, that's even though it's left tackle position, I understand that. But if it's like, you know what I'm saying, Joe? If it's kind of like a project left tackle, I may go with the, yeah. the, the certainty at wide receiver over that. You know what I mean? That's kind of where yeah. I'm that's, that's yeah. kind of yeah. Like my no, I, I, yeah, and I hear you. And that's that, you know, for me, I, I would side a bit with you more there. I would agree. Look, I, and I, again, I want to thank the call of calling in. I, I get what he's saying, but man, if you can get a guy like Jerry Judy, then I think you take him over a guy that, that's got to be a project. Because if we're doing that, then you might as well just wait to the second. You know what I'm saying? Because Yo, here's, here's, you're, you're, yep. you're getting that, that immediate explosive weapon. To, to me, the drop off between Andrew Thomas and Josh yeah. Jones is, is a little bit wider than that. And he's not a horrific you know, tackle, but it, he's not an, a, a guy that you pick at 11. He's just not. Especially not well, over well, Jerry Judy. Not, or C.D. Lamb, or even Ruggs, really. I, I just, I wouldn't do that. So I'm agreeing with the both of you that Judy and Lamb would probably be a superior player to, to someone like a Jones. But here's the scenario. The number one need of the team right now is a left tackle. And there's no way you're going to get a starting left tackle in this year's draft in round two, three, four, et cetera. So the only way you can get them is in the first round. So if, if you know, how, what's the drop off between like you were talking, Tyson, between Thomas and Jones, you know, is it that much of a drop off where this guy can't play this whole entire year or maybe Fant can play the first couple of games and then gently put Joe Jones in. So, Hey, look, I, I want Andrew Thomas no yep. matter what. Yeah, yeah, and I, I didn't mean to, to break in. I, look, I hear what you're saying, but if we're having a baby Jones like that, why not just draft Jerry? Because we don't have to. It's the baby him. We don't have to baby a CD <laughs> Lamb. We don't have yep. to worry about, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to disrespect yep. the player because I, I think Josh Jones in Houston, I think he's a great player. But at 11, when you have guys that can literally, I mean, I'm not trying to put too much on Jerry G. Or CD Lamb, but these guys are franchise changers. These guys are. Uh, uh, in the vein of what we need. We haven't had a, a real number one in I don't know how long. So when you bring those guys in the door, you ain't got to baby those guys at all. You, you're looking at Adam Gaze and you're saying, hey, this guy, you better make him successful. You better put him in a position to be able to get this football because everything's there. He checks all the boxes. So if I have to worry about Josh Jones as far as, okay, I got to bring him in, I got to coach him up here. I got to school him. I probably can't start him right away. I still got a baby. It's like, that's a lot. And, and then again, if we're talking about coaching, <laughs> the same guy that had the 32nd ranked offense last year, the same guy is here. The same offensive coaching staff. <laughs> same guy. The same guy. So, so Joe, we, we, so, we spoke a little bit about that offensive line the last couple of weeks, and we said, Mm-hmm. Even if we get a number one wide receiver, let's say we got Judy at 11. How is, yeah. how is Sam to throw the ball to him when you've got Fant on the left-hand side, you've got a Doga yeah. on, on the right, so you, you basically have the same scenario that we did last year in terms of the offensive line. Is it slightly better? Okay, maybe mm-hmm. yes. But my point mm-hmm. is, without a six in that offensive line, we spoke about this last week, there's no way even Judy can create separation. Even if he can do that, being a, a freshman or a first-year starter in the NFL, going up against CBs uh, at today's caliber CBs, how how is Sam going to get the ball to these these guys anyway? Isn't it better to get a, 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 a starting caliber or somewhat starting caliber left tackle that can give you yeah, 10 yards and then be able yeah, to yeah. get the receiver later? That's why I was talking about T. Higgins. Hey, there's nothing wrong about trading up on the bottom of the first round and getting yourself a number one wide receiver because they're there. I mean, Mims is going to probably be there. T. Higgins will probably be there. I mean, these are. I mean, T. Higgins is six three. He's two hundred and fifteen pounds. He can run. He's yeah. strong. He's got good hands. Yeah. I mean, this is a. Yeah. I mean, I'm just throwing out as a a, a, a player. I'm just saying no, that yeah. we can get somebody in the lower rounds that can help us, but we can't get yeah. anyone in the second, third, fourth round to be our left tackle. No, look, and I hear you, but again, you just said yourself as well, Josh Jones may not be a guy that you can start right away anyway. So he may not be a guy that you can start the first year because you still need to coach him about certain things. So how is that helping, Sam? Because you would uh, still right, be because starting you're whoever, your... whoever we have. I'm sorry, you, you still be starting whoever you have at this point to kind of baby him along, and then hopefully he'd be ready at some point during the season to take starting snaps. 
That's if right. we're going to go that route, doing... you might as well. Yeah, but if we're going to go that route, you might as well just take the wide receiver and either address that with a trade and get yourself Trent Williams or you know something like that, or just <laughs> address left tackle next year because the kid may not so, play for a year anywhere. Well, I, I think if you guys remember my my thoughts on the left tackle with Trent Williams, that that's just a no go. That that's a, that's for me that's a no brainer in terms of just staying far away from that. I mean, you're not going to trade two threes for him or a two and give him fifteen, seventeen million dollars a year. I mean, he's just not someone that I would consider. But you you basing when you're when you're drafting guys. Let's remember when we're drafting, we're we're all we're we're picking these individuals. We're picking these players because we're assuming based on their play, based on their combine numbers, what they can be in the future. So that's why I was saying, hey, I want Thomas. That's my number one guy. But if he's not available and they're all off the board, Josh Jones is somebody that we can see that can. He has the tools. He has the potential of becoming a number one left tackle for the next 10 years. Yeah, but see, but see, Angela, listen, we understand that. You, you, want, you, you, base, you, you draft based on potential and what they can be and what you want them to be and everything else. But also there's a, there's a fine line between stud player and then borderline project and a developmental player and all that. And in the first round, yeah. you've got to weed out those players. Like that's, and listen, I'm, not, listen, I'm by no means a draft expert. And I don't, like, but when you start saying, well... It may take some time, may do this, we may need this. To me, that's you know what, that's second round for me. I want that first round stuff yeah. if my yeah. my four top left tackles are gone. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of, I want that impact play that I know for certain, or in, in theory for certain, and then the second round I take that maybe project, or maybe I try trade up in the second round to get Josh Jones, but I don't do it in the first round. That's kind of where I would be thinking. Well, Just, I want that if stuff. That's, yeah. If that's a scenario that you guys have, then my answer would probably be Jerry Judy, be, uh, per the explanation I gave earlier about the separation, technically sound, uh, you know, et cetera. I think he would probably be your best option at that point. Angela, phenomenal comment. Thanks for calling it. We definitely appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thank you both, and uh, have a nice night. You too. Have a great night. All right, Josie, wrap things up. First thing, thank you to all the great callers. Wild night of debates, and the draft is almost here, so it's thank goodness for that. Everybody, be safe, social distancing, um, wear masks, wear gloves, yeah. be careful. Um, and, Joe, it is your time to shine. Yes, listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote our Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, so it's Let's Talk Jets Radio. Like that page, our content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message us. We'll message you right back. Also, leave us some feedback. We love hearing about what you folks think we do here on Let's Talk Jets Radio. I'm also on Twitter as well, at YoungJ000. That's three zeros. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I'm the troll that lives under a bridge. I will have my Darno jersey on, and I will troll you right back. I'm also on YouTube as well, at YoungJ00. That's two zeros on YouTube. YouTube, three on Twitter. I do videos about the Jets. I'll continue that throughout the season. So go ahead, subscribe to my content on there as well. And if you know, troll me on there as well. No issues. I will troll you right back. And as always, folks, when you see me in person, okay, it is on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, we still do it. Dude, there was like, you there was like 13 Come Notre on, Dame man. references, and I didn't play one fight song. I at least got to do this. You know what? You know what? And I applaud that. You know what? I call that's growth. You know what I'm saying? I, I applaud that, and I want to thank you for not making my ears bleed tonight. Thank you, because every time I heard a certain name, I cringed. I, I, I knew, I felt like it was coming, but you know, you didn't do that. So I want to thank you for that, sir. Kudos to you. Kudos. <laughs> all right. Kudos. Hats off to you. Thank you for not doing that. All right. You you were you were good to you the best tonight. All right. But listen. Don't let Roush get in the way, okay? Push him aside when you see him. If he tries to step in your way, because guess what? The hugs are free, baby, okay? When you see me in person, his arms out, chest open. Free hugs for everyone, okay? They will cost you absolutely nothing. Don't let Roush talk that nonsense. He's a hater, all right? Cannot separate me from the people. Listen, I want to thank you folks for listening and calling in. Without you people, we are absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking your time out of the day, again, to call in and listen to us. You folks are the best. Again, everyone, social distancing, keep your mask on, stay away. Let's just stay at home for a little bit of time, all right, and let this thing pass over, okay? Have a good night, all. Uh, Be safe, and we will talk to everybody next Tuesday. Thank <laughs> you.